All right, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. This is a bi-weekly horror hot fix where every two weeks we bring you some of horror's spookiest speedruns. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Uh, before we begin today's show, I just want to say that SGDQ, Summer Games Done Quick, is coming up uh, very soon, June 26th to July 3rd. Uh, prize submissions are still open, I believe, uh, and you can check out gamesdonequick.com for more info if you'd like to contribute to that. Anyway, uh, last time we had a show, uh, we actually did a Father's Day episode. Uh, I do apologize to you on YouTube, uh, just because I apparently I was reading the comments there, and uh, I think I t uh, scared a few people into thinking it was early. Usually, whenever I plan things out, I do uh, earlier rather than later, because if we did it this episode, it would have been really far away from Father's Day. But the reason why I bring that up is because uh, the Father's Day episode actually really made me want to watch another one of my favorite runs. Uh, a while back, one of our earlier, early, early episodes, I think it's been a year and some change now, uh, we actually featured this game here, The Evil Within. And a lot has changed since the last time it was on. Uh, we have, you know, it was a great run, we had a great runner. Uh, so I thought we would, uh, you know, check this out again, see what's changed, and see probably one of the toughest and one of my favorite runs myself. Uh, anyway, uh, without further ado, we're going to be doing The Evil Within on Akumu difficulty. You might be wondering, what is Akumu? Uh, if you do not know, this means that you'll die in one hit from anything. Anyway, here's The Evil Within featuring Jigsaw Killer. Feel free to take it away. Wow, okay. Uh, Ignatius, thank you so much for the uh, intro there. What's up, I guys? I love the run. Uh, yeah, for you guys that don't know me, my name is uh, Jigsaw Killer. I'm a, uh, a horror streamer. I speed run specifically horror games. Uh, my primary focus is Resident Evil and Evil Within. Uh, but uh, yeah, for tonight, we're going to be doing some Evil Within. We're going to showcase the speed run on the hardest difficulty. And uh, just in a second here, I'll do a countdown for the, the time. But yeah, Akumu, one hit and it's all over. Worse than Nightmare. This is pure hell. Let's get into it. So yeah, uh, three, two, one, and go. Okay, the first thing we did, we're gonna skip this cutscene here. So yeah, as we as we go into the run here, I'll explain all what's going, what's about to happen, and you know how we're gonna go through each section of the game. And uh, hopefully we won't run, in, won't run into too many issues because this, uh, just like the you know the description says, it's pure hell and. Even if you've spent so much time, so many hours, countless hours, you will still run into issues and it's still gonna, yeah, it's it's still gonna troll you in some way. So I'm gonna do my best here to, uh, to not, uh, you know, let that happen or do my best to get around it. <clears throat> um, it smells like blood. No, so yeah, like, like we're saying, the Kubo is one hit kill mode, specifically, this means like anything can kill you. It's not just enemies. We're gonna uh, check it out. This game Don't has like bear traps and stuff scattered around the area. Those would one hit kill you as well. So it's not You're just enemies hitting you, you know, from melees and all that. There is actually um, some minor things that you can live from. Um, like the 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 hunt the, the enemies in this game, the regular zombies are called the hunted. Did you hear something? And basically, they can grab you. They they have like a grab animation, and you can actually live through that in Akumu if uh, Joseph appears with me. Um, so like during the animation they'll grab you and then Joe's can shoot them and then you'll get out of the animation but like that's very specific for that to happen not really you know counting on that but injured? it's just what a detail to uh, you know explain um, <clears throat> Impossible. so yeah just to explain the, the beginning here uh, for the game I've got we're playing as Sebastian Cassianos here we are a detective and we have two of our partners here with us Joseph and Kidman Joseph is like Sebastian's uh, like main partner, and then Kidman is like a rookie. Um, and you get a call to come to this to this uh, hospital here. Let's skip this cutscene. And uh, yeah, basically things go awry, things go go crazy, and we right now we just got captured by the antagonist of the game, Ruvik, and now we've been split up from our partners, and we're completely alone now. Um, but throughout the game, it's got to be like sort of like a mystery thing. <gasps> sorry, sorry, excuse me, my throat is going. But oh, good. yeah, so the game is from here on out. It's pretty much going to be like a mystery. You're going to be wondering what is going on in the in the story in this game. 
And uh, it's it's purposely ambiguous like that. Um, which, if you are curious about the story, you can play like the the DLC and all that kind of like explains the story more. Whereas, you know, throughout the game, it's going to be just throwing all these like crazy details to you and you're going to be wondering what is going on here. Um, so the first thing we're going to be doing here speedrun wise. So this guy here is called a sadist. You'll see him a, a few times throughout the game. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to grab this knife here to escape. And you can grab this, the quickest way to, to grab the knife is to just wiggle here, but you can definitely uh, grab the knife quicker by just, I, I'm using that PS5 controller right now, and I basically just turn the, the left analog stick uh, counterclockwise, and you'll be able to grab the, the knife within like, I think it's like two swings. And uh, here's our first like speedrun tech here, we're gonna spam the crouch button. This actually gives Sebastian a momentary speed boost. We'll go slightly faster doing this. And we need to get this key here. Don't worry, this guy won't see us. Alright, just grab that. One thing as well, we want to grab the key there while standing. It's a faster animation than when you're crouched. If you grab it while Sebastian is crouched, uh, it's like a way slower animation. So yeah, we'll just uh, continue up here. <laughs> Dual sense gang, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, but by the way, chat, I am looking at the chat, so if you guys have any questions about the game or the run, yeah, feel free to uh, ask. And of course, that goes for Dices too, if you have any, you know, anything that you're curious about. I will have some later. Actually, I guess I can work now and you can just tell me when it happens. Yeah. I know uh, when I was talking with you about this earlier, um, you mentioned that <laughs> in all categories, there is a brand new tech that uh, I guess really makes, I think, one of the chapters easier. I think it's chapter seven or nine. I think it's seven, right? Yeah, it kind of starts in 7, yeah. Uh, I guess when we get to that, I would love to hear uh, what has changed. Just hearing that even uh, the Akuma route has managed to find new tech, it's always really interesting to see how these games can change. Mm. Yeah, so... <clears throat> so just to explain, so... I, I, we did this run, I was on... We, I was on speedrun from the crypt there last year. I think it was around March of last year, something like that, around there. Yeah, it was a uh, year and some change. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for this part to pass by and then I'll of explain course. everything. But well, this part here is just very basic. It's just we're just uh, sliding down here. <laughs> so uh, see, so yeah, I was on I was on the uh, I was on this show a year ago with this exact same category we're doing right now. Um, and basically back then I actually ran the game at 30 FPS because that's a big thing with this game. But I actually run the game at 60 now. And uh it's the game's more even more uh, brutal now because of that. Um so that's kind of free time save, you know. If you play the game at six a game at 60 compared to 30, the game's gonna run faster at 60. Um And si since in the last year we've there's been a, a few new glitches found. We have a, a new row for the game. basically we because of because of those glitches, kind of. Um, so yeah, they'll all be they'll all be uh, shown as we go through the run here. All right. Well, one one thing to point out as well is chapter one here is completely different from the rest of the game, though. The, I, I wouldn't say you know lo looking at what's happening now is not what the rest of the game is going to look like. This is a tutorial chapter, so it's just like it's like very basic gameplay. His his leg will be uh, better in the next chapter. Yeah, we, <laughs> so we, we'll be hobbling the whole time. <laughs> yeah, so there is a we'll be running away from the sadist again. That that guy we just seen before, and he's gonna chase us to an elevator incoming. Um, and uh, yeah, let me see. I'm just, yeah, so it, actually incoming now. Um, there is a, se a scripted segment here with the sadist. He's going to chase after us, so we have to hide from him. There's actually a, a skip we can do here, but because we're playing on a Kubu, it's a one-hit kill mode. It kind of requires you to take damage for the most part. There is a chance that you'll do it without taking damage, but it's like it's literally like a 5% chance that you won't take damage. So <clears throat> so we have to take the, like, it's around, if the skip is about 10 to 15 seconds time save. It's not, it's not too much, but... Something to point out there is that actually a skip for this part, and it basically involves um, 
entering the locker late and then entering the locker at a certain point. And basically it makes the te the status teleport into, into the next area. And then we can progress quicker. <clears throat> so yeah, here comes the Eda status here. Yeah, we're actually we're actually still gonna get a little bit of a time save by just waiting here. So we're just gonna wait for a certain I'm gonna hear we're gonna hear a couple of bangs here. Okay. Now, now like I said, this is a, a scripted segment, meaning uh so there's two prompts there, rotate camera and exit. The exit prompt will disappear if you enter the locker like very early. But if you enter the locker late, the prompt doesn't go away then. So we can kind of use that to save a bit of time here. <clears throat> so we're just going to wait for the status. If we would have left the locker by now, if we did the skip, so we would have been in the, in the next area. But so we're just going to do this. If, uh, if the prompt wasn't there, we'd have to wait like an extra two or three seconds before we can leave. Yeah, we're just doing a very uh, basic gameplay here. We're just going to use the bottle. We're going to bait him away here. Also, one funny thing there, when you're throwing the bottle, he's running away. Sometimes he likes to attack that bed there. No idea why. He just, you throw the bottle at the wall, and then he, like, as he's running to the wall where you threw the bottle, he just likes to decide to attack the bed for no reason at all. He's just all like, I hate that bed. <laughs> um, so in coming here, we're going to do a FPS switch here. So, like I was saying before, the FPS is a big thing with this game. And... The, with the way this game was designed, they uh, they didn't really optimize the, the higher frame rate with the highest difficulty. And... The status here is going to chase us here. It's a, it's a scripted event. You're literally just going to hold forward. But... On Akumu and, and Nightmare and Akumu difficulty... With the higher frame rate, he can actually catch up to you here. Even though it's a, you know, he's not supposed to, it's a scripted event. So we need to lower the frame rate to 30 so that doesn't happen. Okay, let's see that. Let's say this. <clears throat> so it's like the gist of chapter one here. And uh, one, one thing I didn't point out yet was the, uh, the specific category we're doing right now. Uh, we're doing this run with no DLC pack, which means, uh, so there's a pre-order pack for this game called the Fighting Chance Pack. And basically it's a, it's a big component for the speed run. But to be honest, it doesn't really make the run as interesting. So I specifically wanted to do no DLC pack just because it makes the run more interesting to watch. Um, Darkness twisting me. But uh, yeah, basically the, the pre-order pack gives you a double barrel shotgun, which is really powerful. It also gives you two extra bolts, which are not in the game without them. Which uh, one of them is a flame bolt, and the other is a poison bolt. The flame bolts are like the big thing to make this run so much quicker. Like it increases, it, it probably increases the, the run by like five plus minutes, depending. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like like I said, we're we're uh, doing this run without the DLC pack, so we don't have the flame bolts, we don't have the double barrel shotgun, we have uh, 5k less less uh, green gel. Green gel is the the currency in this game that we use to upgrade. Okay, what is Akumu? Akumu means uh, nightmare in Japanese. Hmm. Specifically, if you're, that's what you're talking about. Hmm. Now we can run. Yeah, and now suddenly we can sprint now. <laughs> uh, here's a little fun fact for you guys. Uh, this Before this game came out, it was... Uh, this game had like a project name. It was called uh, Project uh, Zavai, I believe. It's like a German word. Before like it came out, it was, you know, had quite, sort of like a code name, you know? That's what it was called before the game came out. <clears throat> okay. So more uh, movement tech here. We're gonna grab this gel. And now we're going to melee. This is actually making us move quicker. 
Um, we can't there? sprint at this point in the game. This is a, like a scripted event here. But uh, oh. if we melee and while we're crouched here, it gives us a nice little movement right? boost here. The city. Whatever are you talking about? <clears throat> you are the only soul here right now. Okay, so yeah, crouch. We'll melee, melee into here. Once we get past this door, that's the trigger for here. This place so now we just have to wait for... for you. So this is uh, Tatiana. She's our, like... This is, uh, this is the uh, safe hub of the game that we're in right now. She's sort of like... It, it kind of seems like she wants to help us, but she's really, like, ominous. She says very, like, you know, things that will question, like, what's going on? Like, why am I here? So you don't know if she's with you or against you, but... She's here to, uh, you know, provide you with upgrades and all that, so... Now we just wait for it to trigger here. Please, relax. Oh. Please, have a seat. Yeah, Project Svayana means Project 2 in German, apparently. Cool. Yeah, I just remember it was some sort of, like, German word or something. No, stop. Or something like that. Hey. Right. So yeah, how you skip cutscenes in this game is holding circle. And some of the cutscenes you can't skip until the cutscene has already popped up. So you have to like, you know, if I want to save like the extra second or so, I have to make sure I time it right. <laughs> can't be lo losing that like 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so. Uh, so we're at the beginning here. We will have, uh, we'll start out completely on? fresh. And so the default stamina in this game, we can only sprint for three seconds at a time before We're getting tired. So we will be uh, dealing with this for the first six chapters. Once we get to chapter six, we will uh, upgrade our stamina. See this, you can see my stamina, it's very, uh, very small at the moment. Yeah, we're just uh, managing to stand as much as possible to get to the objective here. And this here, we just picked up the lantern. This is something we can use throughout the game. We can equip it and unequip it. Obviously, if you have it turned on, it increases your the sight. <coughs> it, there's actually a... Oh, wait, actually, I can't... We have to show... To just look at this scene here. Nice little reference here. You guys might not believe me when I say this, but this game was directed by the creator of Resident Evil 1. Well, Resident Evil. <laughs> J just in case you didn't know. <laughs> Whoa. Were you warning me about this? You are Leslie, right? I'm a police officer. Yeah, and here's uh, Leslie. Maybe I should help you. Should help you. Shit. Mm. How am I going to get you to a hospital? Hospital. 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 Hospital! Hospital! What the fuck? So yeah, Leslie's a giant meme in this game. He has very, uh, very memorable dialogue. And uh, if you're wondering about Leslie and why he's important, uh, so basically, we're we are inside this like dream world, which is like in a machine. So think of like maybe like Inception or Total Recall, that kind of thing. And basically, the antagonist of the game, Ruvik, his brain is the the core of the machine. So he's like kind of like making most of this happen. Okay, so we just picked up uh, matches here. The uh, matches are some of the most important parts of the game, which are going to help us uh, do things very efficiently. They're uh, kind of, if you've played Resident Evil 1 Remake, you might remember Burning Zombies and so on. It's kind of like that, but, you know, enemies don't transform or turn into Crimson Heads in this, so... It's, uh, in this game, the matches are for strategic use. So if there's, like, if you, like, let's say I have a shotgun and I shoot a bunch of them together, and they're on the ground, you can burn, like, them all together on the ground, and it'll, yeah, it'll, uh, kill them all. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> spoiler. 
All right, so we just picked up a key there. For this row, we're going to be picking up six keys for the in, in the safe hub that we were in earlier. There's uh, lockers that we can open that have random loot in them. All right. So here comes the first difficult part of the game. The first possible sort of reset. The chapter 2 village. At this point in the game, we don't have much on us. We have a handgun with six bullets. We have two matches. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to run by these two haunted behind me. They're going to follow me. Now, we want to hope that they don't follow me the whole way here, but if they do, it's kind of fine. Because there is a giant haystack here, which we're going to hope that they burn from. So let's just run by this guy here. All right, get these guys, see what this guy's going to do. All right, this should be fine. So that hunter actually lit the haystack for me with his uh, torch. <laughs> Gentlemen. Okay, this is actually good RNG we're getting right now. Very nice. I'm hoping I didn't speak too soon. <laughs> uh, that's right, so we got rid of those guys. And now let's get these guys here. And we, there's a bunch of bear traps here, so we're going to bait them into them. All right, we got kind of bad RNG, but should be fine. Can I disarm this trap? No. Can I get the torch? All right. So coming up here, there is there's four haunted here lying on the ground. But if we stand at the right spot, we can burn three of them together. There we go. And now we can just stealth kill the last one. Yeah, very, uh, let's say, decent uh, chapter two village there. This, this part can go very wrong, like, the, the hunters are not consistent with how they move. So you have to, like, adjust how they move and so on, so... As a quick question, uh, how generous is the three haunted burn? Because it seems like you're standing uh, in a good spot for that. It, it depends where you're standing, but there is a consistent spot, thankfully. Um, so you can actually see, like, the haunted's feet, like, where you're about to burn, like, when you're crouched. And basically, if you're at the edge of their foot, like underneath their foot. If you're at the edge of it, it's usually consistent then. So. All right. There we go. That's uh, chapter two. So, yeah. Like I was saying before, we uh, we don't... Chapter two is... You, I, I guess you could kind of count chapter two as uh, another tutorial level, you know? This game has... Uh, I'd say both Evil Within games, you know, they both have, like, slow openings. You know, they kind of take their time to get into the game. But uh, this this is when the game really gets into it. This is I, I love the design of this chapter. The this, this chapter is like multiple ways where you can traverse through it and so on, and how you can uh, go through the level. Right. So uh, right there, you notice I was aiming the gun. That's actually uh, a speed boost. We can't if uh, there's a lot of parts of this game where you can't sprint and you're just walking, and basically. Uh, Aim walking is quicker than just walking normally during those parts. Shit. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna scavenge some gel here as we go through here. And the first, we're gonna go right to the 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 sadist that we seen earlier. We're gonna see him again soon. So let's we'll run up through here. We're gonna get this axe here. Axes in this game are very powerful. Very powerful. Axes do a lot of damage. You, you'll see that uh, very soon. Shoot. I'm not one of them. I'm a doctor, Marcelo Jimenez. You this is uh, Jimenez here. Crashed, right? Yes, we're lucky to so, be uh, backstory him else, Jimenez here. He uh, basically here, Jimenez worked on the stem but with uh, Ruvik. Quietly, quietly, mind you. So that's why he's here, and he's uh, he's kind of like Have guiding Leslie yourself. as well. Those things. Okay. Chased me all the way into the village. Me too. Right, so this this game has like a, all over the a, a shortcut for your weapons. Leslie went through that so I just gate. I just uh, equip the handgun so I can quick switch to it. Good lord. Okay. There are too many to shoot Also, a little detail from. here. When you're in this One binocular thing, if you look at this door here, it ends open. this segment a bit quicker the for whatever reason. Down. Little uh, weird thing. <laughs> Alright, so we need to uh, melee that crank there, and then we need to, that's how you, uh, we're able to turn it. Okay, so we're not able to sprint at the moment, that's why I'm aim walking here. So now we're on our way to the uh, sadist, and there's going to be two haunted here, but uh, they're going to completely ignore me. They just run by me. Uh, 
you're gonna see this a few times in the game. Like, a lot of the enemies in this game need to sort of, like, either run to a certain spot or load in before they start attacking you. Over here! Here! Alright. Okay. And if you played, if you played, if you recognize this chapter, you'll know the Sadis is usually here, but he's actually not even spawned in yet. You're about to see him uh, spawn in. So we're just gonna set this axe here. We're gonna run back here to grab another axe. And uh, here comes the Sadis. There he is. Just pops in. We we got here so quickly. He wasn't even spawned in yet. One axe. Two axe. Hey. We just uh, shoot into him here. I'll explain everything here with the Sadis after he's down. All right, there we go. Let's see how the Sadis fight. Like so, one barely revved his chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the one, th the first thing to point out with the Sadis here, uh, there, there's a lot of enemies in this area. But when you kill the Sadis, it also kills everyone else in the area too. So the area is completely cleared now. I better hold on to this. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here. There is a bear trap here. We're gonna disarm for trap parts. We're gonna disarm this. This will give us a flash bolt, shotgun ammo, and two trap parts. And uh, yeah, so we use two axes on the Sadis there and eight handgun bullets. And you might you might be wondering why am I shooting specifically in the waist there? Um, if you played this game, you know the handgun is very inaccurate. It's very easy to miss shots. Uh, so I'm not going to bother trying to go for headshots because it's very easy to miss and it's not worth... Uh, I mean, we, like, you're on very small time as well. Like, you don't have much time to kill the Sadist, so it's better to just go shoot him in his stomach. All right, so there we just picked up the uh, Agony Crossbow. This is, like, this is the game's biggest, like, asset for the, for the game in general and the speed run. The, the the bolt will give us uh, we can use flash bolts to stun enemies. Uh, we'll also get an explosive bolt, uh, freeze bolts. There we go. Now we just collect the more keys here. And yeah, this is the uh, the end of chapter three here. But my run had four hundred and sixty deaths. So yeah. <laughs> Man, what a gamer. <laughs> Wait! Over here! Wait! I know especially uh, um with how quickly you killed that boss. Like if anyone uh, has played this game casually, you know how this difficult that whole section is. Yeah. Uh, you know, being able to watch you just kind of invalidate the whole thing is always pretty fun, I think. Mm, yeah, because like let's say you want to go for the Sadis and you haven't killed the enemies, like because they, they, they'll hear you when you're shooting. Like, they're actually coming for me uh, while I'm attacking the Sadis. So I only have a certain amount of time before they come for me. But I do know we do have enough time, you know, with what we're using them to kill them before they get to me. Oh, the hospice. Uh, yes. See, the beginning of the chapter four here. Treated here years ago. He'd come here thinking See, I'm going to try my best. Uh, obviously, I want to do you know as minimal deaths as possible. But I do predict we'll probably die, like, maybe You'll twice. Two or three times, maybe. My question. But uh, maybe we'll get lucky. Possibly. Yeah, so like I said, this is another uh, walk and talk segment. We kind of, you can either uh, aim walk or melee. Meleeing is actually a bit quicker, but it can be a bit inconsistent in the movement. You need to like get the inputs down very actively. So yeah, we're just gonna go straight up here. Is uh, Leslie again? You'll see him like just like go through the game like that. Um, going down there. So you'll probably remember this game has invisible haunteds. We're about to see the first one incoming here. He could actually, uh, he could actually end up being the first uh, death we have here. He can actually, uh... so, so he the way he spawns in here is he like bursts through a door, and it's kind of it's it's not consistent how he uh, like enters the room. Sometimes they'll try to like grab me quicker than usual. But uh, yeah, hopefully we get lucky here. Hopefully it won't be too bad. I think something's coming. All right, so we run up here. There's the invisible haunted. All right, there we go. Nice. I was there to bait him out, so that's fine. This place is a death trap. Okay, and uh, here we're gonna equip my uh, my weapons I here. Think that's unlikely. Um, 
w one cool thing about um, the weapons in this game is they spawn at different spots in the game. So if you miss the the crossbow and the shotgun in chapter three, they'll show up in later chapters. Um, and it's actually a time save to grab the shotgun in, in this chapter. So kind of like I think it's like a twenty plus second time save. What the? Here. Okay, right, so we'll just that. Leslie. Spam the uh, melee here to go quicker. Fuck. Got a nice little shining reference here. Hmm. So incoming here is a sort of like a gauntlet fight. There's gonna be a bunch of hunters that are gonna appear here. Rubik's gonna summon them out on us. I'm gonna do certain things to uh, hopefully. Not get uh, destroyed by them. Alright, let's see, let's shoot this. Nice. First shot. Like I said, the handgun in this game is very inconsistent, so <laughs> it's very easy to miss that shot. And uh, one thing as well with Akumu difficulty, there is extra enemies in certain areas, like here. So I just set down a, an explosive bolt there. Uh, a Ruvik clone is going to spawn there and it's going to it's gonna explode underneath him. Uh, it doesn't always kill him, but most likely it will. But if it doesn't, it's fine. He he is usually on like one HP at that point, so we just need to shoot him once with the handgun. So this fight here, these guys are gonna spawn in. At the beginning of this part here, we're gonna sprint away. This is gonna make them run for me quicker. Also, the mimic just died there as well, which is nice. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, boy, I just crafted a electric bolt there. Right, so let's set that there. Let's see what's going on here. Can I burn the both of them? Hey, there we go. Good fight. That went a lot better than I hope it was. <laughs> well, one thing that this game is it's very cheesy about, when you burn the enemies in this game or they're lit in fire, they can like reanimate, so like while they're burning, they'll get, get back up and chase after you and then grab you. It's a very uh, consistent meme that happens. And uh, yeah, here's uh, Laura, one of the infamous uh, monsters of the game. Spoiler lady. So Laura here, this is uh, Rubik's sister. Is uh, actually one of the key points of the the story and the lore. She's literally the whole reason the the stem exists in the first place. I'm just gonna run away here. We don't have to worry about Laura catching up to me here. What is it? Which sprint here? But one thing as well that I always loved is the uh, the sound design. It's great. There's Laura. She, she can actually hit you through this door. <laughs> the collision on the door doesn't block her. So if I'm like standing here and she goes for a hit, she'll actually hit me. Yeah. Alright, I'm just born out there as we run. Okay. And suddenly we can we have infinite stamina now. It would be nice if we had this for the whole game. Oh, damn it. That was close. You really had to make the three seconds of sprinting count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah here's Rubik again, he's gonna chase after us. You're gonna see uh, Rubik uh kinda like this again later in the game in chapter nine. He's gonna be like just strolling towards us like this. Right. Okay, that's uh, chapter one. Or chapter four, I mean. It's a chapter. It's one of the chapters that counts. <laughs> it's a very chapter. So incoming is chapter five, one of the longest parts of the game and definitely one of the most difficult as well. 
And then after that is the is probably the most difficult chapter. Chapter six is infamous in this game. Okay. So, for you guys that, if you hate the invisible haunted, you're probably gonna be very satisfied with what we're about to do here. All right. So at the very beginning of the chapter here, we're gonna immediately sprint. Seems someone wants me. I'm gonna run up here. And there's an invisible haunted uh, over here. So let's sprint up here. Okay, and we can just stealth kill him. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's literally it. The beginning of the chapter, if you... There's something with the enemy loading in there at the beginning of the chapter. So if you sprint up to him at the very beginning, there's Looks actually like a I prompt to, to, uh, to stealth kill him. And uh, yeah, it's a free kill. And you, you, you do need to kill him to progress the game, so... Okay, and there's that... There's more uh, invisible haunted here. So uh, there can be three invisible haunted here, but only if you kill the first two here. I'm only going to kill the first one just to uh, decrease the chances of me getting grabbed here. Okay. I'm just going to shoot him there just to make sure he doesn't come after me there. But like I said, it is not consistent how the haunted acts in this game. Okay, so I'll just do that. So I was able to just knock the door into him so I know uh, I can just run around them. And yeah, that's a very good segment there. So the objective in that part is to grab a key card to get to use on this. Uh, but one thing to talk about is the, uh, the keys in the game. We're going to collect six keys for this row. Uh, we need to get two lockers of gel, which is a uh, 10k gel, 5k for each locker. And basically that's going to give us enough gel so we can get our stamina up to level 4 and then we'll get to level 5 as well at the end of chapter 6. Alright, so we have a puzzle room here. Um, so when you first enter this this room here, if you run to it to, to that the wall that's right in front of you, it'll always be the same like puzzle room. So I know which one it is. So now I can just go to the next one. I know this one's on the left as well, and then the final one will be on the uh, the right side. Okay, just run through here. And then the edge is on the right side. It, it's kind of funny, sometimes when I'm speedrunning the game, I kind of like zone out at this part. And I'm like, wait, which room am I in? <laughs> am I in the second or the third one? <laughs> it is a long game. Yeah. <laughs> Lots like, to remember with it. Like at this point, it's like, geez, how long? Like nearly 40 minutes. Let's see here. Let's, let's do this. Yeah, we grab 1k gel there. So there's two strats we can do here. I'm gonna do that. We can use a strat where we use a harpoon bolt. And there's other oh, strat where we can use a bottle. I'm gonna use the bottle. I'm gonna that's save the better. harpoon for the segment let's coming after this. Fast. So let's just sprint up here. Go over here. Right. Yeah, we're just gonna throw this bottle and hide here. Dude, dude, dude. All right, she's just gonna run by, and we're just gonna sneak by and get outie. So I all these she didn't notice Joseph. Yeah, no, she so Joseph's just invisible. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't. She just ignores Joseph. Uh, so this little trigger cutscene here, uh, you need to be like out of combat for this to trigger. So we want to either we can use a strat with the harpoon. So. Uh, when you're using the crossbow in this game, there is it. you can charge it up as a shot. So if you do like a charged up harpoon shot and shoot them around their chest or their stomach, they like kind of like fling across the room. Um, and if you shoot them like while well, they can't see you or you're out of combat, it prevents them from seeing you or entering combat. So I can either do that and then just run by, or I can use that bottle strat I just did. Okay. Okay, so...
Incoming Look, is one of the most stressful parts of the here. run. Uh, There's something wrong with this place. So, so when I when I yeah. ran this game uh, before on GDQ a little over a year ago, uh, this is the first death that we got at this part. So I'm really hoping we can we can right, uh, pull this off. Let's you see know? the run back. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we can gotta really go either way. Sorry? You can really go either way. Mm. Yeah, and uh, we gotta rely on Joseph here, by the way. We gotta we basically gotta babysit Joseph at this part. Alright. So uh this part works in waves of enemies that we gotta kill. The first part of this, we gotta kill ten hunters to progress the the stage. And then phase two, we kinda go up the stairs here and then go back down and then more enemies will spawn. Okay. So, are you all right? All right, the beginning here, we, we're gonna immediately jump down here. And if we get down here quickly, we can stealth kill this hunted. And uh, depending on the movement here, we should be able to burn this guy. All right, let's get him out of the way so he doesn't hit Joseph. And right, these guys split up. It's kind of bad, but it's fine for now. How many of these things are there? So now it's like. We're basically just like scouting around and hoping, you know, we don't run into too many memes here. Alright. This is kinda okay. I would rather this go a lot better than this, but I think we might be okay with this. So at the same time, I'm trying to not die myself. And I'm trying to protect Joseph, so it's like it can be really bad at times. Um, is there still one left? There is. Even after all, there was still one left. Oh my god, Joseph is actually helpful. He's a sharpshooter. Alright, do that. So here I'm just waiting. So killing this guy with the dynamite, this triggers the next phase. So, we're gonna do a cool little strat here. If we stand at this door, we can block the enemies here with this door. So, we, they're just gonna run into the door. We axe them. I grab the axe that they just dropped and use the axe in the other group as well. Alright, so I'm gonna wait for this guy to come out. Hopefully, this guy doesn't uh, blow me up. Okay. Is that. Is that it? I think there's still some. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll do some uh, shock on RNG. Very nice. I'm very happy that happened. Hey, uh, Sebastian, you want to jump over? <laughs> All right. All right, just four uh, haunted here. We're getting some weird RNG. Okay. Just wondering what's going on here. It's actually really rare that this happens. Like, uh... okay. All right, do that. That's fine. Okay, this went a lot better than I uh, hoped for, so Watch out. I'm very happy right now. <laughs> I'm clean so far. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna let these guys just run here. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, do that. We're gonna grab this gel here. Yeah, and that should be the end. Yeah, so this music playing is the indication that it's over. So we just uh, at this point now we gotta wait for Joseph to, to say a certain dialogue before we can progress. You better come have a look at this. Yeah, he has to say that dialogue there. So it's RNG how quickly he says it, which is really annoying. <laughs> like I've I've had a I've had him like take like ten seconds longer for him to talk, and I'm like oh my god, I just lost ten seconds for no reason. I'll go. Tell me what to do. Um, I think I'm actually just gonna scatter around here for an axe. I really want to get one. Because the enemies were like really inconsistent, you know, like usually I'll have like an axe ready for me here, but because the enemies were all over the shop, I've got to go uh, find one. There we go. There we go. I think there's another control panel around here. Wait, did I just drop the axe? Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go. I thought I didn't even pick it up apparently. I think there's another control panel around here. Yeah. Also, if you're wondering about the time here, Kidman is in that water tank in the middle. Uh, it, it's literally like a five plus minute timer. The, it's the last thing you need to worry about. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here. And uh, little detail here. Everything I'm doing here is kind of specific. 
So that guy there that just ran into me there, he uh he he will he has a dynamite on him. He's gonna get that ready. And uh basically he's usually blocking the way that I was running into the there. Kind of dials, right? But yeah, I figured out one, that if I look away from him and shoot the the statue there at the key, it makes him run up to me rather than blocking me. So it's a nice little uh very like convenient timing. Okay. Where'd they go? Shimmy through here. So yeah, like like I was saying before, a lot of the enemies in this game gonna have to load in before they start attacking. That's this part here. <laughs> I just literally just ran by two haunted and they just ignored me. Kidman, hey. you there? So yeah, we're running down to Joseph again here. J Joseph can die at this part very easily as well. I would be surprised if anything really bad happens. Well, let's see what happens here. Okay. So let's jump over here. We're going to burn these two first haunted that just dropped down. And depending what happens here, we're going to change the strat. Uh, Joseph can usually sometimes uh, one-hit kill that guy. He usually just uh, headshot him and kill him. And if he does that, I'll actually use the torch. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah, we're just gonna just do that. There we go. Joseph actually helped me. Are you guys all right? Where are we? Joseph actually being useful. What a day. He tries his best out there. <laughs> uh, okay, now we just uh, wait. I'm just gonna stand here for the uh, the trigger. Uh, so yeah, at this point we have two matches. Like we're gonna use that for the side, boss fight incoming. We have uh, an explosive bolt on us. We have, uh, I think we have two electric bolts on me right now. Which we'll use one in here and then rest for as we go forward here. Yeah, this game is no fall damage. Yeah, like I said before, guys, if you guys have any uh, questions about the game around, you know, feel free. I love questions, so. Let's get going. I actually do have one right now. Um, I guess uh, possibly even help clear things up for chat. Uh, how much health does Joseph have, and does he take more damage than he does in other difficulties? Uh, I'm pretty sure he... I, I think... I'm glad so, to, right. to explain the difficulties... Right. Um, Why would they so, Nightmare and Akuma are the same, him? just besides the one they kill from back. Nightmare, and then hey. sort of casual and survival are a bit the same, but the game drastically changes... Um, when you go from like survival to nightmare and akumu um so i'm pretty sure joseph takes more damage on both nightmare and akumu uh so yeah another thing here we're changing the fps to 30. that's another uh strat we're about to do um so uh if you're uh familiar there is a boss fight incoming with laura where there's like a bunch of bodies around scattered around the area there's there's two like furnaces that we can use the burner. Um, Another one like I was saying with the FPS before, it's very you know this this, this game's not op optimized with the FPS. So if for whatever reason the bodies tend to move around in higher frame rate, um, let me see. I'm gonna use a the uh, no actually we have enough ammo. No no, look at that. We have enough. Let's do that. Hopefully this guy doesn't do something weird. Nice, that's good. So yeah, essentially, I have the frame rate lowered here just just so I can make sure the body that I need to uh, that I want Lord to spawn from will actually should actually spawn from it in a good spot. I'm just gonna shoot that to get that key. Through here. So yeah, we're just gonna wait here. Once the the oil on the ground despawns here. There we go. That's when the hitbox fur goes away. Oh, we get this key here. Fire seems to work. Right. Yes, I have died to the uh, electrical thing before. <laughs> All right, so we're good, we're good to change the FPS now. All right, back to smoothness. Okay, so very specific strat here. I'm gonna run up here, Laura's gonna spawn here. I'm gonna shoot her, I'm gonna burn her here. Alright. 
So uh, the body I was talking about is here. This body here. I need to jump from. I want to have to spawn from that. That didn't work for whatever reason. The idea there was to shoot her at the same time as shooting the lever. I don't. I don't know why that didn't work, but it's fine. The checkpoint's right here, so yeah, it's fine. Same thing here. I got, I got, you gotta, I gotta watch my stamina here as well. Very uh, specific movements. All right, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so everything I'm doing here is very specific. And basically, what this is doing is this is gonna make her burn twice in the furnace, where usually it only happens once. But for some reason, shooting her at the same time as shooting the lever. Can make it so she burns twice in it, and it does like uh, like seventy five percent of her health, I think. A lot of damage, and uh, yeah, you can uh, finish her off in like I think it's like thirty seconds. Very yeah, uh, fast fight. You know, it's supposed to be a boss fight, but imagining the perspective of Laura, where she literally spawns in, is immediately on fire every time. Yeah. It's kind of horrifying <laughs> to her. <laughs> <laughs> Subjects case history. So okay, so chat, who is ready for chapter six? All I'll say is, if, if you don't remember chapter six, all I'll say is, cabin fight. <laughs> if you played this game on a Kumu, cabin fight. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you, you guys want to know the worst thing about the cabin fight? There's no checkpoint between the beginning of the ending of it, and it's a three minute segment. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty scary. So I'm going to do my best to not, you know, get memed. do something very specific here we're actually gonna by me standing here we actually move the collision of the enemy and this kind of moves them more into the middle of the room just to uh kind of help with these guys not hitting me here these guys are gonna run into the electric bolts i'm gonna use the uh the handgun on this guy so i can save the shotgun rounds there we go okay good and that's uh, chapter five How long is this speed runs uh, usually? It depends on the category. Um, I'd say the quickest you'll ever beat this game is between like two hours, 20 minutes to 25 minutes or so. And that's if you're doing like new game plus casual difficulty. Um, but that, that run, I think the, the record for new game plus casual is like two hours and 30. Um, but that runs really old. That runs like five plus years old, I think. So, and we have a lot of a lot of new developments in the game since then. And uh, in this chapter, you're about to see one of the craziest new glitches that we discovered. Um, so, if you remember the segment after the cabin fight, there's this like kind of like long area where you gotta run around in a circle. Um, and basically, there's these like uh, cages with that shoot harpoons out of them. We, we discovered a glitch where we don't need to actually um, like run around the whole area to shoot them. We can actually just stand at one spot and shoot them all down. Which will uh, we'll show off when we get there. Um, and these glitches I'm talking about, they were discovered by a runner by the name of Tenden. He's a Japanese runner. He's very good at the game. He, uh, he found the... We have a, we have a, a glitch with the uh, reloading animation with the handgun. In which, uh, so at the starting, at the start of the reloading animation, if you like click on something, it speeds up the animation. So if you're, so we can like, um, so let's say we get near a valve or a crank. If we stand at it, reload, and then click on it, it'll turn the crank instantly. Also, I don't, I don't need to open this locker. It's fine. All right, let's go ahead here. So yeah, there's a 
there's there's quite a lot to go into with this uh with the run now what's going on and see so yeah, here's our first batch of upgrades so the reason why we upgrade only now in chapter six is because there is a force tutorial uh, that happens uh, between chapter chapter three and chapter five and that tutorial goes away once you get to chapter six so we just wait until we get to uh chapter six to upgrade for the first time <clears throat> all right so here i'm gonna craft two flash bolts yeah if you guys are wondering like what what's the most like powerful bolts uh, the most useful bolts would be the electric bolts and the flash bolts. Those are like, th those are like the king thing to use, like for Akumu and all that. The most uh, useful, good for staggering enemies and so on. All right, I'm I'm currently preparing now for this for this cabin fight. There's a uh, box head, which is uh, its name is the uh, the keeper. Hmm. Pyramid head's uh, cousin. <laughs> Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian. This Leslie with a mirror face. Not insane at all. Okay, so here, I'm gonna grab this another harpoon. The harpoons are gonna be very uh, helpful for the cabin fight here. So yeah, for you guys who don't know, the cabin fight works in like waves of enemies, and uh, basically you can cheese it if. Um, you know, the next wave of enemies only spawn if you kill, you know, a certain haunted or a certain amount of enemies. So basically, we're going to, like, either kite the enemies or make it so that they can't enter the cabin. Right, I'm going to go up here. I usually actually wouldn't go up here, but I really want to get this shotgun. I want three shotgun rounds, so... Let's see, there's a uh, grenade in this cabin that we're going to get. So there's three guaranteed grenades that you can get uh, between um, chapter four, chapter five, and this chapter. We want three for the two giants near the end of this chapter. So kind of the hardest part of the cabin here is actually the very beginning here. Like if I if I can't kill these haunted to the beginning here very quickly, it's 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 gonna be way more difficult. So let's see what happens. Shit. All right, he's doing an immediate immediate throw. All right, very nice. Good start. They don't always like do this, you know, the same movement or actions and so on. All right, so we're just gonna wait. We're gonna eat this guy away. Oh, never mind. Okay, fine. I'm gonna do that. We'll eat her away. So uh, yeah, as long as we don't kill any of these haunted, no more will spawn now. So now we're just gonna kite these guys. The annoying part is they can actually go for Joseph as well. Which is like really bad RNG. Yeah, hope you don't get unlucky. And uh, like, like I said with the FPS, um, when the game's like higher frame rate, um, it's easier for them to grab you and it's either for, easier for them to hit you as well. Their animations are like more sped up. So they can actually be more like aggressive than usual. They're actually pretty, uh, they're actually pretty casual right now. Uh, like I've had times where it seems like they're like double speed. All right, good uh, first phase. Now, now, like I said, there's no checkpoint, so you don't get any checkpoint until uh, you beat this whole cabin fight. So uh, yeah. <laughs> See, so, yeah, I hope you don't get bad RNG here as well. All right, let's see where they spawn from. It's random where they they come from here. All right, do that. And oh boy, don't kill me! Please don't kill me. 
So if you notice, there was there's sort of like an after effect that just happened there. Uh, I think there's, yeah, there's still one more. No, he's actually, yeah. All right. We can kill those two. Uh, I think I should, um... Are they all born? No. Yeah, this... I was prepared for this. <laughs> I, I was prepared for that. Alright, so we'll just uh, we'll just try to kite these guys. Hopefully we'll get lucky here. So I actually can kill the woman there as well. She, I'm allowed to kill her, no more will still spawn. I might actually flashball them just to uh Oh no! <laughs> so unlucky, yeah. The uh there's just 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 the timing with the uh the stamina. But yeah, that's just the brutality of Akumu, you know? One little mistake like that. And that happens, and then, yeah. One of the, yeah, the roughest uh, time losses in the run. Fine, though. We'll just do it over. A little group. Probably get better RNG this time as well. The only thing I definitely hate in speedrunning, though, because I'm pretty sure that was the end of the cabin, too. Like, right Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was only probably... So there was probably like 20, 30 seconds left or something. Oh yeah. And like failing it normally, like, you know, like if you did in like phase one, it's not so bad because you know, you lose yeah, some time, you're right at the beginning, so it's yeah. kind of alright. But right at the finish line, it's always, oh, you're you're, you're pretty much doing it twice. Mm. That's the that, that's the thing. That's that's why it's so brutal. Yeah. Uh, but just just it, it just shows you like perfectly like the this difficulty is no joke when you're oh, dealing yeah. with this. But and it's funny, I was literally just saying like, oh, I should use a flash bolt here. I should have used it exactly when I said it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we get that RNG here. We, uh, we did, I did get unlucky as well, like at that second phase, like I couldn't kill the enemies more uh, efficiently. Like, I usually get, you can usually have more control, basically. And we just nah, have control at that point, so. Do that. All right, so wait here. Yeah, I missed that shot as well. That's another thing that made things go bad. I right, shoot him or burn him. Okay. One thing that's annoying is uh. All right, good. Let's see, I want to make sure I burn her, but not actually, uh... I'm going to get another flash, and I'm going to re-flash them so they don't get out of it as quickly. Okay, I'm going to get another flash bolt as well. i do that. These guys will come for me now. You just gotta be. Like, at this point, I'm, I'm like usually like you know it should be easier for from now on, but they, they can't get a sneak attack on me, and it just really depends on my stamina management. That's the most important thing here. So yeah, just if you're wondering, this part is a pure time segment. You know, we've obviously tested like killing everything and see if it goes quicker. It doesn't. It's a. It's literally like a three minute segment. But yeah, I'm, ho I'm hoping the game will be gentle with me now, you know, it, ju it just literally gave me the worst, like, you know, possible death that you can get in the game. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna, Sebastian, I'm gonna go. take this easy. I, c I actually could have kind of ran out there, but I didn't want to take any chances, so I just did an extra run around there. All right, so. Incoming is uh, one of the newer strats we have for the game here. So, yeah, I'm gonna put the sniper there. Let's move here. Yeah, I'm gonna stop here because we don't wanna be uh, sprinting right away. I need to manage my stamina. I grab that. Right, flash him. Run around these guys. Get to cover. They're shooting from above. Yeah, so this is four cages. We gotta shoot all of these to uh, progress the game. All right. So yeah, 
Let me do this. Let me do that. And you see the other cages drop down there. And uh, yeah, that's the whole segment done now. Alright, do that. And here comes the Sadiso. Alright, good. So, uh, what just happened there is, uh, so we figured out, it was figured out that if you use the flash bolt and shoot it at a certain spot where we were shooting at the, uh, the cages, for whatever reason, uh, it, uh, knocks down the, the other two cages to the left there because there's, like, haunted inside the cages and we, we figured out if you shoot at a certain spot, it actually, like, uh, it'll actually, like, hit them. In which you don't even need to damage them to hit them, I guess. Actually, now that I'm, when I'm saying that, the Flash Bolt actually does do damage to enemies. It's only... It's literally like 1 HP it takes off them, though. But, uh, yeah, any damage you do to them will actually kill them. Uh, yeah, it's very, uh, very, very uh, fa fast segments. Right. So here we're actually going to make Joseph useful. We're going to attach this uh, Explosive Ball to him. I'm actually yeah, pretty yeah, proud of Joseph. He, he wasn't uh, too bad in the the water tank fight in the previous okay? chapter. I don't like that they used her as bait. Almost like someone's toying with us. <laughs> see, don't worry. You, you'll see yeah, very soon here what this uh, explosive bolt is hey, all about. There. Just a little further. So we need to trigger a cutscene here. <laughs> and... Uh, Boom. There we go. See, we made him useful. Okay? <laughs> we had him blow up in front of two enemies, uh, dragging him to his death. I'm fine. No need to worry. Uh, there we go. See, that's how you make Joseph useful. It's a nice bow tie. Uh, we're gonna do. We're actually gonna make. We're actually gonna do sort of the same thing again to him in a bit at the end of this chapter. Yeah, so I'm gonna set this here at a certain spot. I'm really hoping I can uh, pull this off. But by the way, we had a soft lock happen here the last time I was, I was on uh, when we did this before. We actually had a soft lock happen here, and we weren't able to progress the game, and I had to reload uh, the game. Right. Which is, uh, yeah. Didn't happen this time though. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, nice, he died from that. Very good. <sighs> oh no, what's us see if we're gonna die. <laughs> so, uh, chat, how's everyone's night going? You guys having a good night? <laughs> yeah. We're just, we, we we're just chilling out here, you know, just, uh, just having a nice casual uh, little chill out with these four hunters, you know? Just chilling. <laughs> Reminder, uh, one hit uh, is an immediate death. Well, I'll explain what's going on after this is done. It's a time segment here. Okay, last fight. So these guys are on like sort of like a loop, what they're doing here. Yeah, so you can see Joseph there on the crank. He's uh, he's winding up the door there. Um, the enemies are designed to go after Joseph. So as long as you don't hit them, they won't attack you. So you can just uh, block them. You Joseph, can just body block them and then, uh, right. yeah. Let's say you just stand there. It, it is kind of specific. You do, need, you do need to kill the first yeah. guy. But after that, you just got to stand there then. But yeah, cool strat. So let's uh, go up here. I'm gonna go up here and uh, grab this chest here for trap parts. This looks like some kind of a marketplace. Hmm. It looks deserted, just like aim walk. So go a bit quicker. Gotta keep moving. There we go. Man, I, I, I cannot. I can imagine if I failed one of those chest traps in a uh, GDQ. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get these, flash bulb, trap parts. And let me see, sniper rounds. Good amount. Mm. 
Uh, so that's Stra. Uh, it actually doesn't work on all difficulties. It only works in Nightmare and Akumu. For whatever reason, the, the Haunted's AI works differently on lower difficulty. Where do you suppose we are? More like when? This architecture seems straight out of the Middle Ages. So uh, incoming here is another yeah, FPS thing. There is Elevators. this. There's a part here that you can actually just run, run past everything, it's kind like of, for the most part. Up memories. Uh, but in higher frame rate, there's a sniper watching us, and he can actually hit you on, on uh, 60 FPS. So yeah, we'll just uh, lower the difficulty here coming up, just to make sure it doesn't happen. We just like. <laughs> You know, as runners, we just say, we just call it 60 FPS memes, because there's a good few of them in the game. He's, like, more aggressive, I guess, on the higher frame rate. So yeah, switch to 30 here. I could actually snipe him as well, but I'd actually, I, honestly, I'd rather just save the sniper round. Hold on a minute. Let me climb up here and see if I can get a look ahead. Let's see, once we skip this uh, cutscene here. Just run forward. Hey, we aim walk a little bit quicker. Oh, there we go. Well, once we make it to this scene, we're totally fine then. I'll just uh, keep the FPS for until we get past here. So let's uh, shoot those guys. Watch these guys. They're being uh, aggressive. Go away. Uh, we should be fine here. And uh, let's see, we have three rounds, that's fine. We can just grab these. Let's go back to 60. Yeah, that was kind of awkward to get through because uh, there's a, an explosive bolt that we have to grab there. And, and yeah, it's kind of hard to grab it. Someone's like put another mine in them. <laughs> So yeah, we're just going to shoot him and run for now. So these are uh, two giants we're uh, fighting here. If you hide under here, they'll go for Joseph. So we're just going to throw three grenades at them. There we go. Gonna do, there we go. Some, uh, for the AOE damage. <laughs> yeah, we need 30 uh, K gel for the level five stamina upgrade. Let's meet up by the horse statue there. Okay, there we go. Which we're about to get now. This way. And uh, yeah, earlier I was talking about a, uh, a handgun glitch. We're about to do that now. Which uh, it involves reloading the handgun. So now we're gonna pre uh, reload the handgun now while we're not doing anything. So we save time. We saved a whole one second. We're also waiting for Joseph right now. Right. Wait, there was something about a horse in that house back there. Let me see what I wrote. <laughs> and the uh, incoming is a is one of the probably one of the most troll bosses in the game. The sentinel slash the the dog. I guess so. Very, uh, very brutal fight in Akumu because there's like extra bear traps scattered all over the area and so on. Okay. A little weird detail here. This door here is random if we can... Yeah, this, this is a slow animation we're getting. <laughs> For whatever reason, it's random if, you, if Sebastian will kick the door open or open it slowly. No idea why. So, uh, actually, a question right now. Um, in terms of the key routing, just how many keys do you end up getting with them anyway? Uh, if, do you mean like, do you mean for the, the run or keys. do you, Yeah, like, do you mean like, uh, like how many is there in the game or for the, for the run specifically? Uh, the run. Uh, six keys. Yeah, so we get six keys specifically because, uh, when you, when you start opening the lockers for the first time, Are you all right? the third and the sixth locker is guaranteed gel. Every time, 100%, like. So we grab six to make sure we get two lockers of gel, so we have enough for uh, getting the stamina off. Worry about me. All, right. All right, so we ain't coming here. So there's the there's the levers here. We gotta do this little puzzle here, and you gotta turn these levers here. We can use this handgun glitch to turn these levers quicker. 
Uh, we won't actually see it happen because it's gonna, like once we press the lever, our cutscene's gonna trigger. So you won't really see it happen uh, right now, but you will see it happen in the next chapter. But, uh, right, there we go. So we, we, we just like sped up the animation there of, uh, of turning the crank here. We don't need to do it for, for this one. As you can see, like, you know, it's a very, uh, very slow animation, but you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to the next chapter. So we just, the, basically the puzzle here is, uh, we're literally just turning each, uh, each crank once each and that's it. There's really nothing to it. Alright, I think Joseph should, uh, be fine to come to me here. There we go. Yeah, so there's a thing here with Joseph, um, if you, if you don't, if you run to here at the wrong timing, Joseph won't sprint to the elevator here, so it's a time loss. So, um, we, we didn't have that consistent before, but this new glitch actually made it consistent. So it's like a free, like, freaking, uh, like 15 seconds time save, something like that. Right. And, uh, like I said... We make Joseph useful again. I just put an explosive bolt on his ankle. This is gonna. This explosive bolt is gonna go off at the beginning of this next uh, boss fight. Right. And there he is. Um. So yeah, the dog here. You might recognize him. <laughs> very uh, very scary fight to do. Um. Oh yeah, I should read out the shotgun here. All right. So uh, at the very beginning of this fight, um, the, the 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 sentinel will usually lunge at you, but the explosive bolt going off prevent, prevents him from doing that. So we have more time to like use that against them, which we're going to use the explosive bolts and the sniper here. No, another thing I need to explain the explosive bolt because there's uh, there is a detail about them. Right, so you see the explosive bolt go off there. That's gonna kind of momentarily stagger him. Let's do that. Okay, what's he doing? We got unlucky here. Right, I'm just gonna wait for him to get up. All right, there we go. Good fight. Yeah, that's the uh, the sentinel fight. I'm looking for bear traps here. Uh, so yeah, one thing to explain with the explosive bolts. Um, the explosive bolts have like an after effect after they go off, so the initial explosion goes off. But then after that, there's an RNG chance of, well, of like shrapnel flinging across the room. And that can also hit Sebastian as well, so my own explosive bolt can end up killing me. Hurry back before that thing finds you. Right. Another funny meme as well Joseph is like throwing bottles there to distract the dog. Uh, the bottle can actually hit it's Sebastian and kill him, and it's a one-hit kill on a, on a Kumu. <laughs> no, has that ever happened to you? Let's yes. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, it happened. To, it was actually only a few months ago when it happened. It was like I wasn't even paying attention. Like I was just running to the gate. I was like, I just passed through, and then Joseph just just yeets a bottle at me. That's uh, chapter six. Uh, Good chapter, but cabin fight, I am disappointed in you. <laughs> Very disappointed in the cabin fight right now. That sounded close. It's all right, I'm here. Okay. Nothing is gonna get you. Get you. The hair was just there, uh, but you know, we have. Yeah, so we. And another thing to point out with the route in this game, with the upgrading, um, at, the, at this point in the game, we have this game optimized where we only upgrade the stamina and the flash bolts to level 2. And uh, yeah, the rest of the upgrades now are just for uh, the magnum later. Hey, Joseph. Little uh, thing there with the cutscene there. Uh, you can interrupt some dialogue in this game if you press circle. It kind of like stops the... Kind of stops the character from uh from talking if you do it there it brings up the prompt to click on joseph to skip to 
start the cutscene for the next part. So it saves a... Uh, I think it saves like three seconds or something. Three, four seconds. Okay. Let's see, I'm just gonna run through this park, get these trap parts here. This chapter here as well has like the has a huge skip in it, but it requires you to take damage, so we can't do it. <laughs> Sadly. But it literally, it literally skips five minutes of the game. <laughs> Looks loose. All right. So click on this uh, thing to grab the lithograph. This will stop the enemies moving. It keeps them freeze and frozen in place. Okay, we'll just shoot him away so he doesn't come after us as quickly. So incoming here, you're about to see the uh, the the handgun glitch here. All right. Let's, let's see. Yeah. So if you play this game, you'll, you'll know the turning the cranks in this game is really really slow. And you're about to see how fast it is now. It's it's actually uh, one thing I'm really happy about with this glitch is that. Like this chapter is very. There's not not much happens in this chapter, so I'm actually really glad the glitch is a thing now. But uh, yeah, essentially what we do is we go up here, we stop in place, we do this, and there we go. Look, you just literally in, instantly turn the crank. What? How? Yeah. So yeah, I know. So what's happening there is uh, you, you stop in place at the crank, you uh, press the reload button, then you instantly press the the prompt button to click on the crank and you spam it and then yeah it just does it really quickly this huh. this was this was found by uh tenden found it a few months ago it also works on like many other things in the game this why does it work um I'm, I'm not sure it's there's something with it when you're reloading that you can uh, I'm, I'm not even sure honestly it's gonna work on this one right uh it's actually a time loss to actually do on this one because it doesn't take that long to crank this one and you gotta drop the axe first and then you know reload so it's actually quicker to not do it there but we are gonna do it here so we do that go over here and there we go instant crank turn huh saves a lot of time I imagine it's also going to help during the upcoming boss fight as well. Yeah, the the keeper boss fight. We do it there yeah. as well. We do, I think we do it like three times there. Uh, sad, so these cranks here, you can't do it on these cranks, but these cranks work in like increments. So you turn it and then it stops. Turn it and it stops. So it only does it for the first one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's not. It doesn't even. It doesn't even actually do the force one quicker as well. So it's actually uh, pointless doing those. Okay, so we're just gonna run by these guys. These enemies are called the uh, the alter egos. They're kind of like. I'm actually. I, I don't. I don't know if they're like, like, a human connected with some other monster or they're, they're like. You know, two people connected together, but it's like an enemy with two heads. I'm surprised it took me years to. Yeah, that, that's that's the interesting thing about the glitch. Uh, I am. Um, I actually kind of semi knew about it because, like. So if there was like, let's say there was a set piece of items together on a table or something, I would always like uh, reload while I was picking them up and I'd be able to grab them like quickly together. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. But then, but the reason why it hasn't been found now is because it's very specific. You need to be standing still and it needs to happen at the very beginning of the reloading animation. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, It's kind of funny, yeah, Tenden, the runner who found the glitch, and the guy that found the the flashball glitch from the last chapter that I did, he, uh... <laughs> it's kind of funny, he doesn't even, like, announce when he, when he, uh, 
the glitches. He just uploads a video and it's like, hey, here guys, new glitch, have fun. And just then just disappears. What a what a chad. <laughs> it's like the <laughs> meme, uh, it does blank, leaves. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's been, like I said, he's been very helpful with the runs. It's thanks to him that, you know, it's found by now. Right, so we're just going to set down the Electro Bolt there. Grab the, uh, the axe. Uh, yeah, these guys just walk into the uh, Electro Bolt as I'm cranking this. Let's harpoon him. So, like, like I explained before, if you do like a charged up shot, you can like kind of like make them fling across the room, or if they're really close to a wall, to stick to it as well. He's that guy's actually not dead uh, at the moment. Is uh, he'll like come back to life in a second here. He's like in the, I guess, in a little staggered animation. And coming here is the attic uh, keeper section. And let's see, that's uh, that. Shoot this to get ready. There he is, box head himself. So yeah, we just need to wait here. There's a little uh, thing with this part here. We're going to be like, the camera angle and all is going to change here as we're running. Um, but this part, uh, this part like works depending if you sprint or not. Like these traps come down quicker if you're sprinting. But if you walk, the traps actually come down slower. If, if you want to do it like a lot easier, you want to take your time. You actually can just walk through it. Also, you're about to see the, the power of the axe here. Okay. So yeah, we run up to him and just, uh, yeah, axe him and kill him. There's a mini time save here. We are, I'm spamming the melee button right now. Let's see if it works. Nah. So, there's like a frame perfect timing here. If you melee at that thing, you can skip that coughing animation. Once again, stand still. Turn this. Instantly turn the crank. I'm gonna shoot again so we can reload. Let me go around here. There we go. And you can really see how fast it is. Like a lot, most of these cranks take like, I think it's like four crank burns or something before it's done. So it saves a lot of time. Fine, reload, please. Right. Do that. And there we go. I'm gonna get this ammo. I need to switch to the freeze bolt here. <laughs> Akuma was the, uh... Yeah, Akuma was the, you know, brutal difficulty. Akuma was the, uh, just, just die already, you know? <laughs> I'm here to torture you. Hmm. Just wanna run away here. I think I need to, uh, I think I need to shoot the handgun here. Do that. Yeah. Gonna freeze the other keeper there. So uh we need to put the uh, the the crank back on here and we need to exit out of it. This is actually still quicker than uh like normally cranking it. There we go. Still way quicker. So yeah, that's the uh that's the uh, the reload glitch and there's still more of it to come later as well. You are gonna see like other animations that it makes it look funny. So bad to the keeper. Yeah. <laughs> Just 
trying so hard and then you immediately spin the valves. <laughs> I know this was like stressful moments, but he just... Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so someone was asking before there about the, the skip. Uh, oh yeah, I wasn't paying attention, Smar. But <laughs> l like I was saying, uh, the, the parts where we put the lithographs onto the big stone or whatever, there is actually a, a big skip that you can do there. Um, but it requires you to take damage and run a Kumu, so... Run a Kumu, so we can't take any damage and, yeah, we can't do the skip. Take this. I just got done watching the last of the Kumu run jigs I did in Hotfix, yeah. Yeah, well, one, one thing I want to say is a uh, big thanks for GDQ and like Dices for having me on again. You know, it really means a lot. Because uh, you know, because like the, the the last one I did, like that was the first time I ever did like an event or anything like that. So it was a you know very big deal for me and yeah, like kind of helped me with kind of getting used to this stuff and helping the the nerves and all that. So you know, definitely. And as well, if anyone has been enjoying uh, Jigsaw's run so far, he does a lot of. Uh, Really intense gameplay of Resident Evil and the Evil Within, and yeah. just general horror. And you can find them at the. Uh, I'm posting a link in chat, but if you have not checked them out, please do so. Very fun watch. Yeah, you can't you can't you can't take any damage, uh, emeralds. A any damage you take, and it's over. You lose. All right, so we're just gonna shoot that board there over here. Okay, the uh, one sniper shot, one shotgun shot. We'll get rid of those guys. I'm gonna wait to reload here. Uh, so the uh, at the very beginning there, when I was running by those alter egos, um, there's kind of a, a bit of a meme there. You, you, you kind of you want to shoot the left side of the board because sometimes when you shoot the middle of it or the right side of it, it doesn't break for whatever reason. It's like it's like there's some like collision thing or something. But I've noticed if you shoot the left side of it, it's it'll always uh, break. I've been trolled by that a lot back in the years ago. Right. Hey, I'm just gonna run up here. There's a bunch of harpoons been flung at us here, so. Hide there. And uh, yeah, this is uh, chapter eight. This is the shortest chapter in the game. It's literally uh, just under five minutes long, as long as we don't die. <laughs> Is Akumu Iron Man a thing? Depends on what you mean by Iron Man. Uh, like we do, we do have a category uh, to do Akumu without keys or upgrades. That's a thing that we do. Right, so, so once you turn the crank there, a bunch of these uh, little baby things will spawn from the seating there and. I can either use the flash bolts, or I can use the two shots of the, uh, the shotgun there. In which I want to save the, the trap parts, so we're going to use the shotgun. And uh, yeah, if you press the free aim here, you can walk through the water quicker. There's like a faster animation. I'm going to do that. As long as we're quick here, we should be able to just run by here. Here's another part that we can get memed at. See what happens. Okay, seems good. Very nice. Like if you die, you reset at chapter one. Uh, like that's not in like the game or anything, but uh, we do go for like deathless runs and all that, yeah. The thing is though, like you need to have a lot of patience because you know, the first chapter of this game is you're basically doing nothing for 13 minutes, so do you want to do that over and over? Yeah, someone's pointing about the shimmying through the, the gaps there. Uh, if you continuously press up over and over, you know, you press up, let go, and do that a bunch of times, you'll go through it quicker. But this also can cause a glitch to happen. Sebastian will be stuck in the the shimmy animation. 
and you can't get out of it. You have to, you have to reload. Happens, uh, it's happened a few times. Right, incoming here is another FPS change we're gonna do here for consistency. Doc. So we're about to see another boss that we're gonna fight in a couple of chapters. Um, he's gonna chase us here. Now to our right here, you can Doctor. see a cart. The boss on higher frame rate knocks the cart in front of us and it collision blocks us and then he kills us. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna, to get around that, we uh, lower the frame rate. So just when you get past the, the cart there, we'll uh, go back to 60 again. This uh, this is the thing that, this, this happens casually to people as well. I've, I've seen a lot of people casually say like they got stuck at this part when they're playing on PC. All the um, all the console versions of this game are 30 FPS, so or I should say barely 30. <laughs> uh, I wanted to play the entire game at 30 FPS because it's the game's just slower in general, you know. It's free time save if you play the game at 60. And it's just more smoother play and the game just looks way better. Okay, uh, now is my two favorite chapters incoming, chapter 9 and chapter 10. Cha chapter 10 is my particular favorite chapter. I love the edit uh, gameplay in it. Is that the one where you get to do the classic quote? Uh, no, that's actually this chapter. That's, that's, that's Nine, happening right? now. Yeah, no, chapter 9 is the, the mansion. I won't spoil it, but <laughs> <laughs> I know it's fun. <laughs> Okay. So just go up here. Are yeah, we need to wait for these two two triggers. What are you gonna say? Oh well, I have a moment actually while we're uh, just chilling right now. I do want to say a special uh, one thank you and a I guess just a special message as well because if you don't know, uh, I guess for GDQ chat and just for everyone here, uh, today is our GDQ Tech Richard's birthday. For at least a few more minutes on his end, I think. So happy birthday, Richard. Happy birthday, Richard. Feels birthday man. Yeah, he's done a lot of good work with the uh, the show throughout the uh, time we've been doing it, so I definitely want to say happy birthday to that. Hell yeah. R Richard's an awesome guy, man. He's very helpful, so... Oh, yeah. Right. It's a feels birthday man. No. So, incoming here, we're approaching the... Uh, the Victoriano Mansion. Rubik's like home, birthplace, and his parents. <laughs> it's another uh, big part of the game here. Wait. You sure? Uh, let me let me check my gel count. I think I've yeah, a few more than enough. I've never been here before, but. Thank you, man. All the love for Rich in the chat feels good. Yeah, you have the feels birthday, man. All right, you guys ready? <laughs> all right, let's see it. <laughs> hey, stop, damn it. Wow, what a mansion! <laughs> <laughs> now, what? Uh, here we go. Okay, so the mansion here. This, uh, so this mansion part is, uh, there's actually a lot to explain here. Um, what do we so Ruvik spawns in this chapter and he comes after you. He's on a timer. The timer starts when you just after you enter the mansion and you walk forward a little bit. You'll see like the chapter screen pop up. It says like chapter nine and then the chapter name. Uh, once that pops up, the timer for Ruvik for when he's about to spawn will happen. And he will spawn roughly between about a minute and 50 seconds to about two minutes and 10 seconds, somewhere around that. So we've got to do a certain amount of things before he spawns in. Let's go over here. I'm gonna stealth kill this guy. He didn't even see us coming. All right, and uh, another thing as well, the just make sure they're not there. Yeah, yeah. The there's haunted that spawn here, and it's random where what haunted spawn in and where they spawn. So I'm like currently watching out for that. All right, do that. Let's free spot this guy. Alright. 
Yeah, so for, for the mansion segment here, we've got to collect uh, two dials and we've got to complete three uh, brain puzzles to progress. That's what we're currently doing right now. We've solved one of them. Let's do that. So uh, Rubik is probably going to spawn within the next maybe 20 seconds. Might be sooner. So I'm just trying to make it to this, uh, this spot before he does. If I can. Let's see if I can shoot this. There we go. So if Rubik spawns here, he's going to block up the place we're about to go to. There we go. There he is. I see him. Alright. So this is actually just netted us a like 30 to 40 second time time loss if this happens. So now we just gotta uh, just let him chase after me for the next uh, few seconds, whatever. It it is it's if you want to uh, do this very easily, just just look behind you and uh, just have him chase you like this. He uh, he's known to spawn in front of you, but if you have the camera behind you, he never spawns in front of you then. So just have him chase it like this, over and over. Very easy uh, way to uh, manipulate him. And there we go. All right. And uh, you'll notice his, his animation is like sped up there. That's a that's a Nightmare and Akumu uh, thing. He's way slower on lower difficulty. Right. And I... Uh, yeah, so when, when Rubik spawns in like that, he blocks up this fireplace that we just entered. So it's a uh, it's a big time loss if that happens. Right. Kind of nice. Um, so let's let's say he did he didn't spawn in yet. He will spawn once I come back out here, and then I'll have sh I'll actually like sprint around and do. Uh, everything else that uh, we're supposed to do in the mansion as he's chasing me in a very certain way. Well, we don't need to do that now. We just need to run through. Okay, let's run back here. Uh, let's uh, go back here. Let's do this. Yeah, I should grab that freeze bolt actually over there. Let's get the freezy boy. Alright, so I can hear Haunted at the bottom floor. This is random. The Haunted spawning here is... It's all random. Sometimes you won't, you'll won't, you never like see any Haunted here at this point. And then other times you might see like three of them here. We've got two. I think there's actually another one as well. Oh, yeah, there is another one. Yeah, just get rid of her. I'll teach you. Don't wiggle. Okay, good. Nice. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually happy how we handled that. Wasn't too bad. Let's go in here. Does uh, yeah, does he? You literally see her spawn in there, but he uh, doesn't pay attention to us. And uh, yeah, we've one more puzzle to do here. Well, now uh, one last scary thing here is that uh, Rubik can like spawn when you're in here, and he, like it's such a little, little tight little space here. So like while you're going in here, he can actually just block your way and kill you. It's uh, extremely rare though. Like if he, if he's already spawned in, he won't spawn in for like minutes. The second time. It might also be connected to how much you've progressed as well. Uh, so yeah, on our way back now, we've activated the main door to leave. And now on our way back here, we're gonna get uh, two of these harpoons. Not the usual There's a grenade share. over here, um, and, and right now I'm switching to the flash bolts for these guys here. They're here. There we go. Yeah, these guys. These these guys are also random if they spawn in or not. Sometimes they they won't be there at all. But uh, yeah, they. Uh, so it's random if they spawn in, and it's also random uh, how quickly they come after me. Sometimes they will just instantly burst the door open, and uh, if, if they do that, I can just. Uh, Put a flash bolt at them. Oh, so I think I need to switch to the electric bolts here. There's one to grab here. No cure for what I'm going to do to you. Yeah, there we go. But one thing as well with the the uh, capacity of the the bolts. 
So at most, if you don't upgrade Rick. the capacity, you can only carry three bolts at a time. And if you want to pick up the specific bolts, you need to have it equipped. So I need, if I want to get the most efficient time, I need to keep in mind what bolt to have equipped in the moment I'm, uh, I'm about to pick up the next one. If I have, if I already have two. That's one thing you'll be uh, keeping in mind as you uh, as you play. All right, incoming here is one of my favorite things to show off. There's a nice little, uh, I don't even know if you want to call it a glitch, but this uh, incoming room here is going to have something interesting in it. Well, like, starts the zone out here, and uh, there's gonna be a bunch of tripwires here. And for uh, whatever reason, there's gonna be a tripwire here, but it's not gonna be like fully attached to the wall. And uh, conveniently enough, this makes uh, the room faster for us to get through. So just look at the tripwire at the the bottom there. You can see it like it's there, but it's not fully connected to the wall. And this just conveniently makes it so we can just get by quicker. <laughs> So uh, I don't know if that's intentional, but hey devs, thanks a lot for the uh, free time save. Yeah, let's see, let's switch the freeze bolts so I know I can um, pick up the next one we're about to pick up. I'm going to disarm this. That shouldn't get to me. There we go. Let's use the shotgun for this. I want to save the hanging rounds we have. Yeah, so... This part usually takes uh, a lot longer to do as well. Um, but you can actually get through this part way quicker if you run in a certain route that I just did there. So when I shot off the chain for the first part there, um, and then I ran to the right and then to the left, and then kind of to the left again, you won't get like blocked as much. You can get through that part a lot quicker. You usually have to take like a way longer route to get out of there. Here. Also, one funny thing, uh, there's like a random little door or a window here in the distance. There's in the middle of nowhere there. <laughs> uh, let me see. Yeah, let's get those. Yeah, hanging ammo, flash bolt there. I know you're in here. I can hear you breathing. I suppose there's so much time left. Yeah, this is a, this is a long run. It's a pretty, uh, lengthy run. Kind of goes in line with how rough the game is, you know? There's so much to deal with. Rich bastard. It does fly by, though, in a good way. Yeah, it does. It does, yeah. Like, I, I, like both times when I've done this event originally, just... It was, you know, done and gone. <laughs> it happened and it was over. <laughs> Always a good time, though, you know. Oh, let me switch the hang on. Shit. Wait, that's that's why I'm just so happy to be able to show this off, you know, because I do think it's a pretty unique run. Also, if you're wondering about the handgun glitch, it doesn't work on these cranks as well, sadly. Let's go over here. We're gonna shoot the crank to lift us up here. And uh, incoming here is the is a barn fight. Uh, so this segment here will have two groups of three hundred that will spawn out. And you can do some certain uh, mechanics here to to uh, do it very easily. So this first guy will spawn out. I'm gonna shoot him with the sniper, kill him. And I'm actually gonna use this guy's body now to burn the other two. So that's the first wave now that we just have uh, burned. Alright, All right, here we go. Now we just wait for the last guy to spawn out. Now the game will let me just burn them. Alright, there we go. That should be it. That should be the... There we go. Yeah, well, one, one, one little cool thing you can do is... Um, When they're like spawning out and they're trying to get up, if you like shoot them or hit them in any way, 
it kind of like resets their their animation and they'll like lie back on the ground So yeah, incoming is chapter 10. This is one of the most brutal parts of the game, just just like chapter 6. Like mo mo most if most people would say chapter 6 is the most difficult chapter, this this chapter definitely is uh close to that. How many have you killed? Ruvik? I think we're uh pretty Ruvik? sure we're full on freeze balls right Does now. Does he mean Ruvik? Numbers are well. Aim walk here. They receive as they themselves gave. So incoming here is the, uh, if you play this game, you'll know there's a room here with the spinning blades. That's like constantly just going around in a circle and it, it'll de decapitate you. We're going to use that to our advantage here. So we'll start off here. We're going to shoot that window there. That's going to attract two haunteds into the middle of the room. And they're going to get decapitated from the blade here now. Right. Do that. Do that. Okay, so shoot them down, use the explosive bolts. There's a sniper in the distance there as well. And there's a lot going on right now. Okay, so let's uh, set that there, put the electric bolt down. While, that's, while they're getting into the electric bolt, I'm gonna uh, shoot that sniper there. All right, so we get rid of all of them. And uh, the reason why we do all this is to uh, just to clear out the area and it's, it'll make it easier for us to get through here. Because there's a lot of enemies here. Alright, jump down here. I'm going to grab this axe here. Okay, go over here. Blades. Alright, so those enemies that I just axed there, they spawn when you jump over the, the thing there. The wall. You see there's a tripwire there. Uh, so once we put this battery in here, another sniper's gonna spawn now. And uh, basically we can uh, just run over here. I'm gonna see where this blade is. Yeah, if we just stand here, you can see him doing a shot there. The the sniper will always miss you if you, if you cover behind the wall there. So it's a good, uh, good uh, point to just like, you know, wait there and let him shoot and then just run by them. Okay, so that enemy we just ran by there, that enemy is called the, the Trauma. You'll uh, see him a few times in the game, or all this chapter specifically. Uh, over here. Alright, so we just want a bottle here to bait a bunch of enemies here. Now we just want to see what the this clone does here. There we go. Do that. So we're still not to clear out the area. There, I'm just trying to reload this so I can pick up the uh, the freeze bolts. Yeah, what, what what I just did there is I threw the the bottle at the wall, and then uh, all the enemy, most of the enemies in the area, will run to it, and then I just freeze bolt them all together. Okay, so here I'm gonna pre put down this electric bolt here. This where. Where we're going to right now is sort of like a dead end. So we're actually going to be going back now once we uh, do this. To make sure I pick up that, all that sniper ammo as well. Okay. All right, so I need, I need to be make sure I'm full on the electric bolts again. Okay. So on my way back now, more haunted are going to spawn now. So I'm going to hope that they don't uh, grab me or hit me. Let's run out here. Just grab the axe. Alright, flash bolts. This guy will get affected by the electric bolts. And there's a crank here we want to turn. Right, she'll run into that. Now we just gotta watch what these uh what happens here now. Alright, nice. Okay, now we're just waiting for this uh, thing to go through. Very, yeah, everything's very specifically timed here, so. Uh, one more sort of like scary room here. Uh, the the thing I was talking about earlier, the trauma enemy. There's two of them this in this area here, and to get out of this area, there's like a big long crank we gotta turn. 
So we're gonna utilize the there's there's two traumas here and two haunted. At the start of the segment here, I'm gonna shoot this haunted and he's gonna land into a bear trap. So we start off, shoot him, the fun into the bear trap. Wait for this guy, set down the electric bolts. Now I'm just gonna wait for these guys to come over here. Alright, good. So if I successfully freeze bolt them all together, I have enough time to just set down the electric bolt there and then just crank this and we're good to go. There we go. We get the there's a flash bolt there. Also, you can see there's a crank there you're supposed to turn and that lifts up the blades there. But you actually don't need to do that. You can actually just uh, crouch, uh, crouch through it. The blades don't uh, have that big of like a hitbox, I guess. Also, I want to shoot this right now. Right. So that's that segment there. And there's the... Uh, that's the boss we were running from earlier. He's called the Amalgam Alpha. Hmm. We'll be uh, fighting him at the end of this chapter. And uh, here we go again. Here's Laura. She's back again. We have one big giant uh, segment with her here. Um, so once again, you're about to see the glitch again. The handgun glitch. There's these levers that we can use it on here. And it's the animation is funnier because you'll see the cranks turn before Sebastian like turns it himself. And we run over here, stop the place, do that. And you can see like it just instantly turned. And Sebastian, like you know, he's obviously the animation is so slow that it's already turned before he's already done it. Right, I think we should have enough time. There we go. There is a tiny, tiny chance Laura can uh, grab me here, but it's really rare. Usually good if we uh, run by here. Okay, run through here. <clears throat> she crazy. <laughs> Once again, run up to the crank. There's a, there's a load of these cranks here, so. So, yeah, we're getting free time saved doing this. Alright, so we're just waiting for this to go away. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, let's grab this hanging ammo here. Reload the shotgun. There she is again. Run by her. So instead running here, there's another crank here. Ah, I didn't do it this time. Never mind. Um, I'm actually just glad that we did it the first two times, but it's fine. Not too bad. I'm just gonna wait for her here. <laughs> you can actually like bait our animation there. I gotta watch her because sometimes she'll decide to just instantly sprint at me here. Be kind of scary, actually. Is she gonna run around? Oh, she's being there. Uh, she's being five head now. She learned her lesson from the last boss fight. Yeah. Oh my god. She didn't uh, run into the the flames there. Okay. I need to uh, shoot my gun here. Should be still I should have enough time. Okay, ah no. Apparently I failed it again. It's fine though. Ugh. Sometimes she just likes to take her time doing that. Right, do that. Sound the spirit trap. Oh okay. <laughs> Went for an instant uh, grab there. All right, go. I think. Uh, all right. There we go. All right, here comes the final, the final section now. 
the final area. Oh, missed the shot. All right, I'm gonna actually, uh, I'm gonna wait for her here. Just to make sure she doesn't uh, get me here. Alright, do that. Yeah, for this section we need to shoot a bunch of these levers to make the flames go away. Ah, okay. <laughs> she uh, grabbed me like... She doesn't actually usually go for me that quickly. I don't know why she actually went for me that fast. It's fine though. We usually have way more time to uh, burn her there. Let's do that again. Okay, do that. Yeah, look, that's the usual thing that happens here. Man, I've got to stop failing this. It's fine. I'm not going to worry about the glitch, honestly. Right. But yeah, if we do this quick enough, uh, we will have enough time to uh, like get behind her there and burn her. So now we just got to wait out the flames to go away. So I uh, grab the other thing. And yeah, let's see. Okay, so yeah, my my resources, ammo count is all uh, good at the moment. It's all the way I want it to be. Incoming soon is the uh, Emalgum Alpha boss fight, in which we'll mostly be using a good few uh, sniper rounds, explosive rounds, some uh, shotgun rounds as well. Yeah, nice little break here as well. <laughs> nice zoom. Yeah, nice. So I always do a little zoom in here. These uh, elevator parts. Shit, back here again. We're back at the mansion, and we're instantly gonna leave again. <laughs> Thanks for the view. <laughs> Literally the best part of the run. Close up shots of Sebastian. <laughs> and yeah, you just seeing Sebastian just like flop on the ground there from the from like nowhere. That happens a lot in this game. <laughs> yes, yeah, let's grab uh, more matches here. Grab these trap parts. <laughs> Jigsaw W. <laughs> uh, also, the beginning of the next chapter is also going to be the only skip we do on the run as well. There is one skip we, could, we, we do on Akumu, and it's happening in the next chapter, so... Exciting times! <laughs> Uh, let me see. God damn it. Nice, so we're just gonna... We're not gonna run away, we're gonna run into the boss. So, like I was explaining earlier, my own explosive bolts can uh, can kill me. Um, So we're gonna be standing behind this pillar here or whatever. So I'm gonna be like... Standing out this explosive bolts. I'm gonna sit behind it. Just to make sure he doesn't hit me. I use the flash bolt there because he has like an eyeball. Right, just to make sure he doesn't hit me. Alright, do that. Throw a grenade. Alright, hopefully he just jumps over. There we go. His movement here is kind of awkward, but it's fine. I'm gonna actually uh, make sure we get him down here. Be one more shot, is that? Yeah. All right. Let me see. I'm gonna actually just run through here. Now, that, that wasn't uh, that wasn't the best second phase there. Um, the end of the part there, um, I usually would do two sniper shots and then a shotgun shot and two handgun shots. Kind of, we kind of did it like kind of like out of order, I guess. But it's fine. 
So let me go back here. I just want to make sure I have a bunch of sniper ammo here. Grab all this. Get this uh, electric bolt over here. Get this grenade and we'll finish off chapter 10. Poor Amalgam Alpha. <laughs> And uh, chapter 11 here, this is one of the, this is definitely a brutal chapter as well. It's, I'd say it's probably, uh, I think it's the second longest chapter as well. It's good like 20 plus minutes long. So first we'll have uh, free aim to just to walk faster in the war. So uh, incoming soon is that uh, we're going to do a skip to jump over to sort of like a gate or whatever. It's uh, it requires kind of specific uh, movement and placement, I guess. Yeah, I'd be surprised if I don't do it on the first try. You can go, you can go through gaps like that quicker if you uh, melee. If you like melee and then press crouch immediately. You go through them a little bit quicker. And here we get the, uh, the Magnum. It's going to be uh, very helpful. Now yeah, we have full and flash bolts. Yeah, because I picked it up at that, that spot. Right. So uh, we're about to like enter like a sort of like a building site here, and there's gonna be a bunch of enemies here. But yeah, like like I said before, we can actually skip through this part. Let's go up here. There's gonna be a guy blocking my way here. We're just gonna shoot him with the shotgun, get him out of the way. I'm gonna run up here. I'm gonna use the harpoon on this guy just to, just so he's like staggered for longer. I do that and I'll grab the shotgun ammo. Go over here. Go up here. And once we get to the top here, we want to stand still and nudge forward twice while uh, aiming. Now, if I jump here, we should just jump over. And there we go. That is the gate skip. Kind of a uh, specific uh, aiming and movement there to do it. Like I said, after I climb up the ladder, I stand still, nudge forward twice, and then. I turn the camera there to face the gate and then aim at a certain spot. And then you just run forward and you'll, uh, you'll like land on a collision or whatever. You just jump over. I probably don't need to grab this ammo, but I'll do anyway, just in case. All right, let's shoot this. So we need, we need to shoot this body here because there's a big giant fish here. I think the... Uh, I'm trying to think, what's the name of this guy? The Shigio? I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm trying to think how it's spelled now. <laughs> I think it's like S-H-I-G-Y-O. I think that's how it's spelled. It's been a while since I've like seen the name or heard it. <laughs> All right, so here are the fish is here again. We're going to just throw a bottle to bait it. Yeah, let's see, I need to stock up on the electric bolts. <clears throat> yeah, so we're full on uh, matches right now, it's good. So we're gonna go over here. So here there's gonna be two Ruvik clones at this part. We'll do a very specific strat to handle this. So we get five Magnum rounds from that. If I didn't pick up the Magnum previously, it would spawn from that case. Which is uh, bad because you would have five less magnum rounds because it doesn't, you know, you, you're picking up the magnum instead of the ammo. Alright, to start this off, we're gonna eat this guy into the corner. We're gonna burn him. I'm gonna run by this by her. 
I'm going to shoot the lower arms so they go away. Yeah, hopefully this guy just runs into the electric bolt and dies for me. Okay, there we go. So yeah, once you kill the Rubik clones, all the other haunted will... They'll uh, die with them. Some kind of fake. Yeah, incoming soon now is one of the... One of the most brutal parts of the game. The... I guess you would call it like a garage shutter segment. If you're from, if you've uh, played Resident Evil 4, you, you, you get to the island and you have the part where the you know the enemies are spawning from the this shore and it goes up and down and then you know you kill like a group of them and then the next one spawns in. Is this his doing? We're gonna be dealing with the sort of the same thing here. Detective. Are you alright? Realize there would be no one yeah, here we're gonna uh, upgrade the Magnum. Yeah, so specifically, I'm gonna get the the stock up for the Magnum just so I can pick up all the the Magnum ammo that's gonna we're gonna get grabbed later. And here we're gonna get the damage up to level three and get the accuracy up. I'll get the fire rate up as well. I actually usually would just get the the stock up, the damage up to level three, and then the the, the accuracy, because it is very easy for the shots to miss in this game. All right, all right. So let's hope I don't mess this part up. I right, go through here. Nice, snipe that guy. So let's go over here. I'm gonna. There's a guy hiding behind this thing here. Let's snipe him. So to begin this part, let's do that. Freeze those two. Wait for this guy. We uh. Oh no. Okay. Usually, actually, this guy will fall off the edge there if you uh, shoot at the right part, the right timing. Okay. Right, so let's put an electric bolt there. So those guys, so the, that's that's gonna kind of be the gist of this part. We're gonna put down electric bolts here. Um, so here comes the next wave. I'm gonna snipe this guy. There is a sniper here now at the edge here. All right, snipe him while they burn those guys. Okay, now we're just waiting for the uh, the next guys to spawn in. I'm gonna get this uh, other sniper around here. We go. Okay, the, these guys control me. And like, sometimes they just don't want to like come at me at the same time. So like, you know, it's gonna be hard to shoot them with the shotgun together so I can burn them. And yeah, there's the last guy here that uh, shooting us with the machine gun. I'm just gonna do this carefully. So yeah, we'll just wait here. Yeah, this guy can't shoot you like while you're throwing, like while you're crouched and throwing uh, the grenade, th like your hand sticking up can actually get shot at, so <laughs> I'm not going to risk that. Right, let's hope he doesn't get, this sniper here doesn't get me. Alright, good. Yeah, there's a pillar there blocking the sniper here, so, so if we uh, jump at the right timing there, we can just do that. There we go. Alright. So incoming there's a possible glitch here. There's, this, there's supposed to be a gondola here, but sometimes it despawns. Let's see if it despawns. Yay, it's actually here! Yeah, some, sometimes this, this gondola just decides to despawn and that happens as well. The enemies uh, running into each other like that. That's, that's another thing. <laughs> gonna do that. Right, let's see what happens here now. Oh, they actually got flashed. The enemies love to not get flashed here. They just love to ignore the flash at this part. But it actually worked. We didn't have run into memes. All right, chat. Here's everyone's favorite part of the game. 
the gondola part, shooting these guys down. <laughs> Everyone loves this part, right? The main thing that's going to get me killed here is potato aim. If I am not able to shoot these uh, these guys here quick enough, they're gonna they're gonna kill me. There we go. Please, not too bad, potato aim. There we go. That's good. Good start. Alright. So these enemies do spawn in sort of the same timing, so we can predict like what's what they're you know when they're gonna spawn in and what to do. I'm doing that. Alright, do that. Now I'm gonna snipe this guy in the legs. What's this guy doing? Alright. And there we go, that's the uh, the gondola section. Very, uh, very specific shooting, shooting at certain points. It, it all depends on the handgun if we actually shoot, like, you know, the enemy's quick enough. That's what will get us killed there. Right. But yeah, at this point, uh, we have four handgun bullets left, four, four shotgun rounds, that's pretty good. Four sniper rounds, that's good as well. Usually I'll only have, like, two sniper rounds left. As well as only about, like, two handgun rounds, which, uh, at this point, thankfully, it's not that important. over here sometimes you get meme the game will not allow you to jump over there to get that magnum ammo and you just it's gone forever then the game won't let you like go back up for it kidman oh, here's that kidman we haven't seen kidman in a while So yeah, we want to wait a bit before we jump here. Sometimes you just land into the water. Just wait a bit there. Should be able to just like run into the bus here. Uh, you can't. Sh you can't kill these uh, haunted here. We're, we're like we're aiming to get to where Kibben is, so those haunted will be in that spot where we're going to. So you can actually yeah, kill them there, and there'll be less of them once we get up there. So I'll, I'll only do that if I have enough uh, sniper rounds. Yeah, so this is, this game has uh, 15 chapters. We're on chapter 11 right now. All right. The, the fish is following us there, but very, uh, very, very unlikely that it'll actually get us. I, I actually have had instances where he actually does just get me there extremely rare nice right, so here we're just uh, shooting the bodies down so the fish uh, eats the haunted and we can just pass through right, so in coming here we're going to uh, once we enter here I'm gonna like shoot the haunted and then we're gonna bait them into an electric bolt Oh, yeah. yeah, he is. He actually went through the wall. <laughs> I think that's the mall, is it? Yeah, like this guy reanimated. It's going to try and grab me. <laughs> okay. Nice uh, recovery from that. Uh, so let's see, uh, this part here, we just have a bunch of haunted spawning in. We can literally just run by these guys. Oh my god, Kidman doing work. <laughs> okay. 
the stamina regen until we the game's gonna like make us just walk here we can't uh we, we can't even like aim walk around in here we have to just walk normally you were at the church yeah joseph and i he's in bad shape or at least he was incoming here is uh incoming here is like one of the most despised parts of the game because it's just complete rng but there's gonna be a bunch of roombas just uh just randomly going around and they're there's like spikes on them so they get near me you're, it's over you lose and their movements are just completely random so and uh, besides the beginning though kind, kind of besides the beginning it's the most like consistent part of it or nearly consistent i should say the start of it i can kind of like look at what the roomba is doing and then adjust accordingly I think a proper word from his Doombas. <laughs> what is that? Did you shoot me? Right, I'm gonna craft two uh, flash bolts. You attacked me. I'm sorry, but you're tainted now. You might try to stop me through you. Wait, what are you talking about? Bum, bum, bum. Okay, goodbye, Jennifer Carpenter. <laughs> we shall see you later. So now we're just waiting for Leslie here. It's going to trigger uh, the scene here. Also, since you brought up the Doombas, which yeah. game has the worst Doombas? Leslie? This game or RE6? Leslie, is that you? Oh, wow. Uh, oh, I, probably might, I might say RE6. It's hard to say. Like, I feel like they're more like, just annoying in an RE6 with the way they work. But I think it's because like, they explode. Yeah, they, they, there is actually explosive Doombas in this as well. But they're not, like, they're not, not all of them explode, so. <laughs> yeah, remember these have the, uh, the saw blades. Hmm. Alright, so let's see what this guy does. I should be able to just, nah, too much. I thought I could actually just get around them there. I thought it was, like, good timing. But apparently it wasn't. call them the Doombas. Yep. And another thing as well, uh, their movement is inconsistent on 60 FPS as well. Like, they, they can either choose to be, like, really fast or really slow. So that's another annoying thing with the uh, the hard frame rate. Right. So uh, yeah, let's run up here, see what he's gonna do. I'm just gonna wait for him. Is he gonna go walk through the next area? Kind of like he's kind of doing a 60 FPS thing where he's like moving like slowly now. I could am um, no, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna save the uh, the flash ball that I have. I really uh, want to save my resources as well at the moment. I'm gonna see what this guy's doing. Okay. This guy's like right at the end. That <laughs> nah, was okay. I, I usually can get through this part way smoother than that, but I'll take uh, one death. Okay, there's a flash bolt. There's a guy right here we can flash to kill him. So yeah, this this part is like fully flammable, so any like weapons you use or anything, uh, yeah, blows up the area. But we can use a uh, we can use a harpoon and we can use a flash. We can use a freeze bolt. Right. All right, four enemies uh, spawn here. Just flash them. Yeah, yeah, let's craft more uh, flash bolts. Joseph. Hey, there's Joseph. <laughs> yeah, so a nice, a neat little strat we're about to do for the next chapter now. We're going to pre-equip the Magnum. Uh, the next chapter is the chapter where we're on the bus. And this is like the big giant like spider or whatever chasing us. Um, we figured out if you shoot the spider at the very beginning, it kind of like skips the phase of the fight with him. So he'll do like way less attacks and uh, particularly for this first phase that we do, uh, the first part of it, he's going to nearly instantly go off the bus for us here. Right. <clears throat> Obviously, as long as I don't miss the shot as well. <laughs> we won't miss the shot though. <laughs> Oh, 
Never know, though. Man, what a pretty spooter. Damned if I'm going to die. Alright, so you just maybe shoot, that's gonna make them uh coming out these little little baby slugs or whatever. This is the uh, like the indication that you did it correctly. Just do that to make sure he's that. Can I shoot that? Alright, there we go. Got some nice RNG with the uh, grenade drops there as well. Oh no, it's coming for us. Nice uh, pictures now here. <laughs> Box punk. Hmm. Right, head, I have a question. Does anyone have a flamethrower? <laughs> we might need it for this. I don't know how long we'll be safe here. In dire need of a flamethrower. Mm -hmm. what? Okay. I'm sure someone will come along with one. <laughs> this guy. Hey. Decently accurate aim. Wait for this guy to get up. So yeah, this segment here is at time, so we're just gonna choose certain enemies and uh, just survive until the segment ends and the thing about this part as well the enemies uh, just like keep respawning Enemy to the right. but there's actually some uh, sort of like manipulation we can do I'm just trying to get rid of this guy okay I can uh, I'm gonna I think I can do I have another yeah I'll get a harpoon it's, yeah, that'll kill him if I shoot him. I don't want to actually kill him. Get to cover. All right, that should get rid of him. He's gonna fall over, isn't he? I'd be shocked if he doesn't like fall down. Good night. Oh, it actually killed him. All right, I didn't want that to actually kill him. So right now we're waiting. There's going to be two haunted that are going to run towards me here. They spawn after you kill the, uh, soon after you kill the snipers. There's one. Okay. Yeah, this Molotov guy here. So the Molotov guy to my right now, he respawns, but this one doesn't. This guy here stays dead. All right, there we go. Very nice. So now we just want to hide. <laughs> wow, is he really not dead from that? Okay. Terminator over here. Mm -hmm. See, we're just waiting to sell it now. Leave these ones to me. All right, cool. This is the end of the segment now. Once you see the prompt pop up there in this guy here. This is another nasty part because it's like it's a long kind of a long segment there's no no checkpoint in between that was a close one yeah let me see here we don't need to finish from that button whatever and uh, like 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 before we're gonna pre-equip the magnum that's gonna Skip the uh, it's gonna skip a phase of the fight again. We're gonna see the spider incoming. Let's give Joseph a little hug here. There you go, Joseph. It's gonna be okay. Keep us to the left up here. Right, 
Magnum. Like before, we'll use the air grenade as well. Okay, nice. That got rid of them all. So right now, I'm kind of hoping for a stagger. Sometimes Joseph can stagger them. Which will uh, skip them, like, doing these all these attacks here. See, uh, what's he done? All right, cool. There we go. See, so yeah, for the second phase, he has to do this twice, where he sums out the little slug things. All right, cool. Okay, very nice. There we go. I can just grab this. Grab all this sniper ammo as well. Uh, let me see. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to switch to the flash bolts here. Pretty long shotgun ammo now. No, no, I'm seeing. It should be fine, though. No, not Joseph. Just get us out of here. There's an ambulance there. There might be some kind of first aid. I'll go. No, I'll do it. Don't let any of them on board. We're the uh, protagonist. Of course, we're gonna do it. Hmm. Okay, so here we're going to uh, to start this off. We're gonna use a flashbolt to stagger these uh, these two haunted here. Shoot this bomb in the wall so it doesn't blows up as we run by. I flashbolt those guys. And we should be able to just run by everything from here. If we're lucky. Now watch out. There's a nice little uh, thing we can do coming up here. The game kind of expects you to do a thing here, but you don't actually have to do it. So here we're going to take out this guy in the, uh, the Gatling gun. If I can snipe him from here. There we go. Good shot. Now they, they all hear that sniper shot. So they're going to go to that thing now. The, the game wants you to use the Gatling gun to kill everyone. But you can actually just uh, climb the bus here and escape. You can just jump over here. Just uh, end the segment. The even here... Uh, you even hear Sebastian saying, like, you know, oh, gotta get to that, you know, machine gun or whatever. It's kind of intended for you to actually use it. But now you can actually just climb the, if you run to sort of the, the front of the bus, the edge of it, the side of it. You can uh, jump over. Let's get out of here fast. The, the game actually holds your hand here. Uh, there's about to be there's a truck in our way here, but the game actually turns for you if you don't do anything. I didn't do anything there. The game actually turned to the right for me. Nice game. <laughs> the RE4 trucks are hitting hard. Kidman. Yeah, that's that's one thing to point out. This game has uh, so many references to other games. There's uh, Silent Hill references, Resident Evil references, you know. This game is obviously it's directed by Shinji Mikami. Director of RE4, RE1, Resident Evil 1. Oh, okay, go. I ain't coming here. I want to get another uh, flashbolt here. Jesus, what could cause this much damage? Is that a subway sticking out of the ground? Yeah, but look how it's positioned. 
If we can get over there, we might be able to use it to get across. Yeah, well, one thing with this game is there's so much like downtime in this game, which is uh, why it's like so long. Let's actually grab this hanging ammo. Like I, uh, when I'm like, you know, like if let's say I'm trying to get a better time or anything, uh, I'd never really like grind the game in one stream. I'd probably do like one or two no, runs per stream and then just come back the next day because it requires so much uh, patience. I'll meet you on a lower level. <laughs> yeah, let's run through. Damn, the income on here is the apartment section. Yeah, so this part here, we're about to see like the, the keeper walk by here. This makes me, this always makes me think of the uh, the scene in Sun Hill Homecoming, where Pyramid Heads walks by. Oh yeah, a similar thing. My favorite part about that game is that Pyramid Head doesn't even like do anything. He just walks yeah. by. <laughs> he just doesn't do anything, and then he's like in the ending or whatever. He's literally just cashing his paycheck. Actually, I should have. Uh, I think I can still freeze both them. I did that like a little out of order. I was supposed to freeze both them first and then disarm the thing, but I think we should be fine. Nope, I need to read out. I got collision blocked by a, a thing there. It's fine. Checkpoint's right here, so. Okay. Yeah, so go over here. Do that. Freeze bolts. Okay. Now, run through here. That this electric bolt from here, and a bait and a, an, anim, uh, an animation from that guy, and hopefully, yeah, this is very good RNG. This this, this strat is pretty consistent, uh, but we just got like really good RNG, so pretty happy about that. But uh, yeah, what makes that part consistent is the timing of uh, when we where we set down the electric bolts. So we wait for this guy. And here comes the, uh, the keeper again here. Set that there. There we go. So yeah, very, uh, very straightforward strat there. We just shock on the forest guy and then it just freeze the other uh, keeper and then shoot the trap and then you know, disarm the acid trap. The, the, the area, the top floor uh, apartment there is a really scary room to do. There's so many enemies in that room. There's a Ruvik clone, there's a bunch of enemies with guns. Oh great, and this, this, there's this crazy guy here. <laughs> he loves tormenting others. Has to let them know he has the upper hand. Lays out the bait, gets his victim all worked up. His unholy traps. When it was happening to me, I could see what was going on. I could see it, but I couldn't turn back. I had to know. I had to know the truth, and he knew it. Detective Castellanos. Okay, Lady, so level with me. If you're wondering who is Why that guy, crazy? who the heck is he? One wishes His name is uh, Ivan. He's a uh, reporter. Uh, to make to make it short, basically he uh, he's like reporting on what's going on with the the mental hospitals and so on. That's like a part of this game and the story. And uh, basically, uh, Jimenez, the doctor, invited him over. And uh, well, like while he was there, he he uh, like he put him inside the stem, and that's that's why he's here now. Cause like he was gonna expose everything, so Joseph. you can uh, figure this out with the the second Kidman DLC, the consequence. It's explained literally right at the beginning as well. Keep her chasing Joseph. All right, the uh, oh God, now what? The uh, room was the back again. 
But thankfully they're not they're not as bad here. Not not as annoying now. Right, let's hope I can shoot this at. There we go. Alright, nice, nice. One of the Roombas running through the uh, thing. The electric bolt for me. There's the other one. So here we're just trying to be careful. There's a bunch of spikes and traps all around this area. Alright, so I'm just waiting for the flame. Also, uh, watching out for this. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that missed. <laughs> I'm just trying to not. There we go. Very good. I'm very happy that happened, actually. Alright, so let's uh, set you over here. There's going to be more uh, Roombas spawning here. One, one of these Roombas is an explosive Roomba, the one at the top there. So he's the, he's the more scary one. Alright, he's gone. He's gone away now. That's good. I think there's actually... I, I'm probably wrong, but I think there might be shotgun ammo here. That's fine. I'm just gonna... No, no, no. There we go. There we go. Lovely. Perfect. There we go. Alright, before we enter here, we're about to another, do another boss fight with the uh, box head slash keeper. And this little, like, meat locker. And we've uh, got to kill him uh, like three times. So we're going to start off doing that. Two uh, grenade throws here. You again. And now once you kill him here, uh, a Roomba comes out. I don't think I got it, did I? Alright, got it. <laughs> Alright. Let's do that. I actually, I, I would have liked to actually kill the uh, Roomba with the just the shotgun, but I use the uh, electric bolt as an emergency. All right, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna just one shot him with the Magnum here. Uh, let's actually get this ammo. Cool. Yeah, I have to say, I think Chapter 14 is one of my favorite parts Damn of the game as well. I really like Chapter 14. Fuck. Yeah, we still have a bit to go, guys. But yeah, I just want to say, yeah, uh, big thanks to you all for being here. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the run so far. Been really fun, you know? Showing yeah, off been a fun run so far. Yeah. I hope, you, uh, I hope I was able to show some cool stuff off to you guys. Trap parts. Better find a kid, hey, go. Oh, hold on. My uh, controller disconnected. <sighs> My mace took this long for the controller to disconnect randomly. <laughs> I'm hoping it does not like a sign for things to come. <laughs> Okay, last two uh, chapters now. We're gonna, uh, I haven't counted how many times we died. I think it might have been four. I think it might have been four deaths we have. Which, which one of them was me not paying attention. <laughs> like uh, Sebastian's face uh, eaten off. You've got to be alive. Yeah, if you guys do like uh, horror stuff, I uh, I specifically stream uh, Evil Within and Resident Evil. That's like that's like my focus. So you know, I do like uh, speed runs, story runs, and all that, challenge runs, and usually in the highest difficulty as well. That's that's like the thing I like to do. Right, let's, see, let's do that. We did the uh, RE6 No Hope. Yeah. That. Yeah, Ekdice is there. Uh, he Ekdice has recently gone to re 6 as well. He did a uh, did all the four snares together. I'm gonna start trying to sell more people. Uh, it's surprisingly <laughs> decent. 
it, it really is like when you get into it it does get like a lot better you know that's 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 what i enjoyed about like i i really enjoyed like learning the mechanics and then uh playing on no hope i'm scared of no hope but it is a fun game yeah yeah, I think you're also for evil then. Uh, for anyone uh, wondering context, it's always kind of neat to see. Because, you know, when you're watching the speedrunner, like, you can never really tell, like, oh, like, how how good are they at the game. I'm pretty sure Jigsaw's Akumu time is better than my, like, regular any percent time on this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a hard game, even on the uh, easiest no, difficulty. No, yeah, you're, no, you're completely right. Um, and it's even harder now with the game being more the casual... The casual uh, difficulty uh, run is is way more optimized, like than Akumu. You know, there's yeah. more like very straightforward strats, I guess. Look at this guy come after me. This guy's like one HP. <laughs> Let's get this trap part here. So yeah, we, we can literally just run by all these guys here. These guys are no no threat to us. I, I guess this guy here is a threat. He can kind of kill us. If we spend too much time here. Okay, just crouch here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there's like a trigger here. We want to run to this side here. I've noticed if I, like, once I turn around, if you run to the wall on the left there, it'll consistently trigger the enemies to spawn out there. So I'm purposely, uh... Please don't hit me. Ah, uh, I'm actually surprised that got me, but... The, uh, the reason I died there is because the timing of me reloading, um... So in, in this game, if you press the free aim while you're in war, you walk faster. And I, I literally just, uh, I reloaded at the, at the wrong timing because you can't sprint when you're reloading, so, or when you start the reloading animation, so. Or, well, actually, no, it's because I'm in water as well. Okay. I thought it would have been fine, actually, there, though. Uh, yeah, there we go, crank. There we go, there's the crank glitch again. Uh, so we have one more uh, crank glitch to do, and this one's actually pretty sweet because before before the glitch was ever found, we would actually use a an electric bolt to get through this part, but we don't actually have to use the electric bolt anymore because of the uh, the glitch. So it actually saves uh saves us four trap parts for the run. Jimmy through here. Alright, see, so we just run by these guys. There's a small, small, tiny chance this tram might hit me, but I've noticed if I run like specifically behind them here and around them, he usually won't, he won't, he usually won't uh, hit me here. Let me just do that. Just run around them. Go here. And I uh, hope they don't mess up the timing here. And it should be fine. There we go. Then we just run by him. Shoot him. He will usually grab you. Yeah, very uh, specifically timed, that is. Right. It's the, uh... So, what I just shot there, that's the, uh, the Quell. That's the name of the boss we're about to fight soon. Give me that. And, uh, yeah, there's like a, sort of like a a pre-scripted segment there but you can actually uh you can actually shoot him there before he actually grabs you and uh skips the whole like scene also i'm gonna put i'm gonna switch the handgun for the magnum here Shit. This is dead. for this uh fight here just so i can quickly switch to it damn it what am i an electrician so, uh, the quell boss fight here we're, we're going to start off with the electric bolts in which we do want to actually wait a second before we set it down because if you if you set down the electric bolt immediately when the fight begins he the quell will do like a certain animation which he doesn't re, he doesn't get affected by the electric bolt as quickly or for for as long so we want to just wait a mini second before we set it down 
right? So we do four shots on way. All right, we did that. All right, there we go. Cool. We're fine. I should have actually, yeah. Uh, I could have actually shown a funny animation there, but fine. So that's the, uh, the Quell boss fight. Uh, so, the, so the Quell fight has uh, two phases. The first phase, he just comes after you, but when you take a certain amount of his health off, he'll enter phase two, and then he jumps up into the ceiling. Um, we specifically do four shots, and the idea is to make him do a certain animation where he, he brings out these little slug things just like the spider. And during that animation, he's stuck in the animation. So we can actually just, uh, he's not able to like get out of it. So we can actually just shoot him with the extra, like it's around three extra shots then to finish off the fight. So like four shots first and then we wait for him to do the animation. And then while he's stuck in that animation, we do three shots then and that, that'll uh, finish him off. game like Ori 2 Remake and yeah, like sort of you know they're I would say they're very different games in terms of uh, you know Ori 2 Remake is it's more uh, linear well this game's linear too but I guess like there's more Ori 2 is more like backtracking and that kind of thing and there's more puzzles and so on I think this game does enjoy this game yeah yeah this game does have puzzles, but they're not, they're not like, difficult around, really, to be honest. Or, yeah, straightforward. My research in your name again. Did you think I would? Yeah, I, I usually recommend this game. Like, if you, if you love Resident Evil 4, I'd say you'd more love this game then. They're very similar. They're also directed by the same person, so. Nobody in the world knows you even exist. Oh, but they will know. Yeah, this this game does have like a and a, a good uh, history. Like, like when this, after this game came out, a lot of people like didn't like this game, but this this game is one of those games that people started to like more, like over the years. Kind of happened when uh, the, the sequel came out. A lot more people preferred the sort of like the linearness of this game rather than the open world second and so on. Precisely. And there's people that prefer the second game over the, the first game as well. I, I, I personally prefer the first game because I think I think these games should stick to being more survival horror. And like sort of like grounded, I guess. But that's just uh, my opinion. I do also speedrun the second game as well, yeah. Hey. Alright, so just like uh, chapter 5, we do the same thing here. Yeah, the, th the thing that's very unique with, with this game and the sequel, they're both different experiences, even though they're like, you know, they're sort of the same gameplay, but when you play both games, they're a different experience, like... Because the second game is like a semi-open world, and it's more like survival. I guess it's more similar like to The Last of Us. I would say yeah, the second game is more accessible than the first game as well. All right, so yeah, we have the final chapter here. Nobody here at all. <laughs> Ruvik? Losing our minds. Losing our minds. Leslie's dialogue, man. <laughs> yeah, 
This way. Man, this is this is this is us waiting for the Ori 4 remake, you know? Losing our minds. Man, I can't I can't wait for the Ori 4 remake. It's gonna be amazing. Hey, wait! Person nice. said, I'm uh I'm happy we're getting the RE4 as assets. Yeah. Mm. Cause then we get haunting ground. Oh yeah, it's actually yeah, it's my, a good point. Yeah. It's like copium. <laughs> Can we get haunting ground remake, please? Yeah, and then there's <laughs> Dino Crisis, you know. Dino also Crisis I don't know if it's gonna get remade anytime soon. Mm. Yeah, it, it seems like they're just you know, waiting for the it's probably going to be a thing where they're going to be like, you know what, you've remaked so many other things. Let's just do Dino Crisis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this way. It's going to come down. Yeah, so in coming here, this we way. are running down. This is, the beginning of chapter 15 here is just a lot of sprinting up until the next gameplay part, which is uh, sort of the final like gauntlet fight of the game. <laughs> and here we are back at the uh, mental hospital again. like Joseph said so yeah the whole reason why we're like coming back to the beacon here like throughout the whole game we've been uh protecting Leslie from uh, Ruvik because like Ruvik wants to escape from STEM uh the sort of like the evil corporation Mobius they like uh, killed Ruvik and used his brain for the uh, the STEM and uh, Ruvik needs like a body to escape from it so that's why Leslie is important Leslie has sort of like the same like uh, brainwave pattern or something like that because they both like both uh, Leslie and Ruvik have experienced like a tragedy or whatever. So with that like Ruvik is able to use Leslie. It's like the whole like point of the game I guess. You know a throwback to the last episode we did of the show I forgot they're called Mobius. Someone said they're called Morbius and I, <laughs> I, I believed it for a moment. I was like Wait, they are called that, aren't they? And everybody goes, oh wait, no. It's Mobius. <laughs> the, the meme lives on. <laughs> it dies. I was aware of every slice. For, for the longest time, I didn't even know what that meme was, and I just start seeing it so much, and I'm like, okay, I have to the look The real up. <laughs> meme is that it bombed in the movie theater twice. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we're here, we're, here we are, back at chapter one again here but we can actually sprint this time you don't get the hobble again mm. oh yeah here's another funny uh, there's a funny running animation here with Sebastian going up the stairs here it's like one of the things I love to point out Look at that animation, it's so goofy. It's all like cartoony. <laughs> Jigs is gonna morbo. <laughs> Alright, more Sebastian close ups. Don't worry, guys. There's there's another Sebastian close-up coming as well in a bit. We all love the Sebastian close-ups. <laughs> okay, so incoming here. We're about to uh, get ready to enter the next... Uh, Got in the fight. <laughs> Damn it. This is the uh, reporter again I was talking about earlier. I... 
Yeah, so the essentially what this part is is uh hunters are gonna spawn in at certain points and we're just gonna like basically burn them uh, as they spawn in for the most part. And we wanna do it at a certain timing. I love the other look at this uh, arena. <laughs> Alright, we'll start off. Immediately run up here. We're gonna get like a sort of like a forced cutscene here where we can't move or anything. So while that's happening, we just set down a an electric bolt there. So these first three hundred will uh, get staggered from them. Well four of them, I mean. Alright, we burn them. The next group is gonna spawn from the other side here. That guy should just walk into this. Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. Now, uh, let's go over here. I'm actually, I need to be quick here. The next group is literally about to spawn here. And let's uh, make two of their electric bolts here. There's uh, four hunted spawn in here. Can I get the mimic? Nope, it's fine. I have the emergency freeze bolt in case he doesn't get burned. Yeah, so uh, once we kill a certain amount of enemies now, uh, coming up soon, uh, a sadist is going to spawn in with an RPG. Okay. And set that there. I'm going to buy another. Electric bolts is an emergency, just in case. I see these guys are spawning. I'm gonna burn these. Now I'm just gonna slowly walk because I want these three guys to walk into this electric bolt. Oh, they're being weird. Oh, we're getting we're getting weird uh, hunted today. It actually, wasn't that bad. Now I need to be careful here. Don't do that. And hopefully. Alright. There we go. Alright, so there are four uh, hunted here. They, uh, they will just stand still here if I don't move forwards. <laughs> so if I just stand here, they don't do anything. And I can just snipe them here. Okay. So yeah, if we do want to progress the game, we do need to kill the sadists. So that's another thing to point out. Uh, I'm going to actually get the sniper ammo just in case. Just in case. Yep, yeah, this is a Kumu difficulty. Nice, yeah, so we want to, uh, for, for this part here, yeah, so this part here is a nice little reference to Silent Hill 2. At the end of Silent Hill 2, there's a fight where there's you're fighting two pyramid heads. And here, you can probably guess what we're about to fight. Two uh, box heads. <laughs> uh, let me see. All right, good. Just in case. And so usually I'll be using uh, like six uh, explosive balls there. And then I do uh, four sniper shots and then just one magnum shot to the, the keeper on the right. Okay, so yeah, we've got a bunch of bear traps in the ground here. 
explosives on the walls, eyeballs that will teleport me back to the beginning of the area if it, if it hits me. Let's see if we don't have any memes here. Let's shoot the bear trap there. Let's uh, walk with the eyeball here. I'm just going to wait for it to pass by. We'll just wait for it to pass by. Be patient. Use the flash bolts. Okay. Let me just run away. There's actually a... Uh, there's actually a funny glitch you can do. You can actually, like, uh, run to a certain spot and the blades won't kill you. And you just pass by Sebastian. And then, like, Sebastian is stuck in that, like, running animation forever. <laughs> okay, now we can <laughs> chill. There's that zoom again. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys are witnessing history right now. The best part of the game. A long uh, close-up elevator section with Sebastian. Never riding in an elevator again. <laughs> the uh, the lantern is gone, so I can't use it to brighten up his face. <laughs> Yeah, the main like gameplay section is already done. Uh, the rest of the game though is like sort of like scripted or on rails. It can't be. Which I've always found a bit disappointing because you know through the whole game you're kind of like building yourself up, you're upgrading and all that. I mean, don't even use our weapons on Rubik around. You know, we're given like a Gatling gun and a rocket launcher to fight him. I kind of wish, you know, we actually fought them like we're actual weapons. Oh. Hey, Doobie Hawk. Oh yeah, here's, here's something funny to point out. Uh, so, so this game has a thing where enemies things act differently if they're on screen versus if they're not if you uh for whatever reason if you turn the camera here the game just instantly kills you if you face like the enemy that's chasing you huh yeah it's kind of it's kind of a strange thing you're not allowed to turn the camera around like look behind you at the moment or you just it's it's over <laughs> you lose i wonder why yeah no and it happens with uh the section in chapter 10 where Laura's chasing you like if you turn the camera while she's chasing you she'll always uh she'll always catch up to you and uh, grab you all right so i always have a fun question not only for you but for anyone watching why do you think rubik's character here i think it's like amalgam why does he have braces oh i don't like, think look, at, think look that... at his face you'll you'll see <laughs> he's wearing braces yeah he like, is why <laughs> Good dental care. <laughs> He's an amalgamation. Why does he need braces? <laughs> right, let's see if we, we can get a quick kill here. If we get enough good shots here, we can get a quick kill. Let's see if we can pull it off. All right, get rid of that. All right, no quick kill. You can end this part a lot quicker if you get good, good brain shots here. You don't have to shoot so many of the weak spots. Okay. Th this part is also very annoying for speedrunning on a Nightmare Nakumu because you can get a very fast kill here, but it's not consistent at all. My, uh... The world record I have for this is, uh... I literally have like a 30 second time loss on this part at the very end. Mm. 
Do you have to get it first try on Akuma, or do they give you like enough bullets for multiple times? Uh, it's um, like well, if you die, like it just resets to you know, however many that they give you. That's good at least. All right, so we start off. Hopefully, I can get no, no headshot at the beginning. Let's see if I yeah. Uh, there we go. Nice headshot. Hey, very nice. Two headshots in a row. Let's see if uh, what this is from. I think if I get another headshot, I should finish it. Maybe. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll just wait for him here. There's like a scripted attack you can do to him here when he gets right up to us. And you just wait here. He just he yells at us or kind of like screeches at us and we just uh, shoot him in the head there. All right. And now we have the, uh, the final shot of the game. Oh my God. Braces. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, funny, funny thing there. I've, uh, I, I've lost like deathless Akuma runs to that shot at the end there. <laughs> so I've like done the whole game deathless and then I mess up the, uh, the shot there because you don't have much time to react to it on uh, Nightmare and Akumu. You have all the time to react to it on lower difficulty. But yeah, guys, that's been uh, Evil Within Akumu. We still have a bit of time before we before the game ends here, but yeah. The run's pretty much done in terms of what we'd expect for estimate and all that, though. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see how long it takes to finish off the game here. <laughs> yeah, we still have the timer going because of the uh, final action coming up, but it was a good run. Hmm. Yeah, I, this this run was actually went a lot better than I thought it would. So, and I, uh, I'm, going to I'm very this. happy we pulled off like all the new strats in the game. We pulled off like the one in chapter six. So I'm actually, uh, I'm actually really happy about that. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the Kuma run. If you would uh, like to check out my channel, feel free. I speed run this game all the time. I do speed runs for all Evil Within content. I also do uh, Res Evil runs and so on. When's time, by the way? Uh, after I skip the first cutscene here. So I uh, remember the, uh, the nurse, Tatiana. She's actually here. Behind Kidman here. There she is. Leave that one. And those two. They never actually like did that with this. Like she's she's one of the, like the Mobius uh, soldiers or whatever. Or if that's what we're gonna call her, an agent. She's in like a suit or whatever. Alright, so time is incoming here. So uh and time. Nice, nice. We can see the uh, results here. All right, let me see. I'm going to predict. I think it's six deaths we have. Am I, am I right? Am I wrong? Four. Okay, four. never mind. <laughs> three or four three deaths. Oh, four, really... oh, four. Yeah. That's good. Very nice. Cool. All right. Let's take a moment as well. I want to say thank you for doing this run. It was a great run. Four deaths on Akumu. Yeah. Like on, on, on GDQ. So I'm actually uh, really yeah. uh, pr proud of that, you know? It's a very uh, wow. brutal difficulty. You know? Yeah. First things first, uh, you have any shout outs you want to give? Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'd like to show out uh, Ammo Wolf, uh, yeah, Ammo Wolf, uh, Lotmaster X, K Hunk, uh, The Day 0201, and uh, Tenden. These guys are all people that have, you know, run the game for years, putting time, finding all the strats, and, you know, basically it's like a combination of. You know, everything that you've seen throughout the game, you know, it's a real team effort. So this this run would not be what it is without those guys. So, so uh, yeah. Um, All right. Let me just finish off here. But yeah, yeah, guys, thank you all so much for having me. Th big thanks to GDQ. 
Eck, thanks a lot for having me on Spear, uh, Spear Runs from the Crypt again, second yeah. time on. So, and like, like I said, the run's very different now. The last time I ran the game, the first time it was uh, the game was uh, I ran the game specifically at 30 FPS the whole time. So, a lot, a lot of also, differences this time. Uh, another important thing: if anyone didn't want to check you out, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, so you can find me at twitch.tv uh, jigsaw underscore killer. Uh, you can also find me on YouTube. Just type in Evil Within Akumu or just Akumu Jigsaw, and then yeah, you'll see my channel there. I have plenty of uh, videos there. So I think you had a recent a new challenge on the on your YouTube, right? Uh, the, uh, the no yeah, upgrades, I, no keys. Yeah, so just to explain that, I uh, my recent video is a an Akumu speed run where uh, we don't upgrade or use keys in the run, so I have to deal with the default stamina. It's a, it's also a video I got edited as well, so it's, it, has a, it has a cool intro to it, so if you guys want to check that out, feel free. All right. Yeah. Well, once uh, again, thanks. I want to say thank you. Oh, good. No, 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 I'm not, it's fine. I was just, just going to say, yeah, thanks. <laughs> of course. Well, thank you once again. It was very uh, nice having you on the show, and thank you for showing off the evil then. Yeah, guys. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. Eck, GDQ, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. Take care, everybody. All right. That being said, uh, we're going to be wrapping up our show for tonight. I do want to say thank you, everyone, for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this run of The Evil Within uh, on Akumo. Uh, it's definitely a hard category, and it's one of my favorite runs to watch. I thought it would be really fitting going into SGDQ uh, to kind of show off a really interesting run. Uh, that being said, uh, we will be back on Speedruns in the Crypt in about two weeks. We'll be back the week after SGDQ. Uh, we'll have a fun show in store for that. Uh, we'll see what kind of goes with that. It could be a few things, but we will be back the week after SGDQ. So we'll be back with spooky fun. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I am the host of the show, Speedruns in the Crypt. I plan it out every two weeks. I am McDysis. You can find me here. Uh, you talk about, you know, the show, everything, run my own games. Uh, you can find me pretty much on everywhere if you want to check me out there. Uh, anyway, I do want to say thank you all for watching and have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. And we'll be seeing you next time.